Forget everything I said. You gotta go there. Oh, this is all theory. So not to burst anyone's bubble, but this is what, what's his name? Magnus Carlsen could have gotten this against Car uh, Fabiano in the World Championship. So the point is by knight mm -hmm. d5, your queen needs to stay protecting the knight and stay protecting the pawn c7. It cannot do both at the same time. So that's why knight d4 comes in, attacking mm -hmm. the enemy queen in return. So then knight takes queen, knight takes, and we're at a very... Well, this was some pretty lit theory. <laughs> I mean, by pretty lit, you mean extremely tame and unentertaining for our nearly 5,000 viewers, then I completely agree with your definition of lit. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> You're gone? Did I just kick you off the, the stream by accident? Oh my gosh. My bad. I mean, you know, I'm just... I, I respect you over here. I'm just, just saying. Oh, that's okay. It made me laugh. And here we are, the Dream Team is back. I'm Grandmaster Robert Hess here with the one and only Alexandra Botez. Alexandra, how you doing on this late Tuesday? Well, for you, it's not that late, I guess, but on this Tuesday evening for you. I'm, I'm good. I'm not quite as energetic as you are, even though it's later for you since you're on the East Coast, but I'm really excited to see the games today. We have so many 2700s playing. That we do, and in fact, the game that is on the screen right now is that between Hikaru Nakamura and Le Quang Liam. So we have an exciting night ahead of us here. It is the Battle Royale format of the Pro Chess League. That means all the teams in this Battle Royale, you can see them underneath our images. You see San Francisco Mechanics, St. Louis Archbishops, Mumbai Movers, Seattle Sluggers, Webster Windmills, Shangdu Pandas, Australia Kangaroos, and Delhi Dynamite. Wow, that was a mouthful. They will all play one another, and the board one will play board one, two versus two, three versus three, four versus four, for the entire night. Yeah. <sighs> Which matchup are you most excited to see today? Uh, Hikaru Nakamura versus everybody. Does that count? Versus everybody? That counts. Yeah. That counts. What about Fabiano? Are you excited to see him play? Oh, for sure. And Dingley Ren is in the field, so there are going to be some really big heavy hitters uh, in this evening. And, okay, don't count out Laquang Liam, who is in this very game. So there's just right. too much, too many great games to take yeah. in. And, Alexandra, I'm going to count on you. I always rely on you, but uh, you're going to be the one who's in charge telling me, Robert, stop talking nonsense, move over to this game or that game. Sound good? Well, 
You normally don't talk nonsense, but that does sound good. And before we start diving into the games, I'll remind everybody that the time control is a little bit shorter today. It's 10 minutes with two second increment. And the games are going to be moving a lot faster since they're not staggered like they usually are. So stay with us if we're moving a little bit faster and let us know if you guys want us to slow anything down. Absolutely. I just brought up the format real quick just to show everybody what I had said. And what you were saying, you know, board one versus board one, two versus two, et cetera. They, the top place team gets 24 points and a $500 bonus. So that's going to be fun. And we have a scene here with all the teams and all of the boards. So we can keep an eye on who's playing. And as you can see, Dingley Ren, Ahmed Adli, Fabiano Caruana, Hikaru Nakamura, Adiban Baskaran, Anton Smirnov, Laquan Liam, and Daniel Nerditsky all the top board for this battle royale. And of course, you can go across the way to see some of your favorite players on boards two through four. Ooh. Well, this is gonna be a busy matchup. I see New York Marshals in the chat. I'm not sure if it's the official New York Marshals, but they're right. It's late on the East Coast, but these are some great matchups. Exactly, so hopefully you'll be tuning in here. Yep, so I'm actually just getting word that apparently uh, some of the players are hearing some funny music on their, you know, they're all on camera. So someone in that uh, group call is listening to some music, but Okay, enough about the logistics. Okay, good. I thought I had funny music here. I was a little... No, no, you have great musical taste. We all know this. Mm -hmm. But uh, enough. I'm, I'm done talking about the extracurriculars for now. I'll be back. Don't worry about me, Alexandra. I will. Uh, Hikaru is streaming this very game. So, um, you know, he has the white pieces here against the Kwong Liam. I would say slightly better just because he's a little bit ahead in development. Right, Alexandra? He's got the Rook right. and C file in this ending. So that seems to favor him at least a little bit. How do you think he should play this middle game position? He has the isolated pawn on d4, um, but he's already getting his rooks on the seventh rank, so that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's, it means that this rook on a8 is going to be tied down, because if you play the move b6, well, then your rook needs to stay protecting a7. If you play bishop d5, which he did not play, your bishop is blockading the d-file and means that d4 pawn excuse me, feels a little bit safer. So this rook fc8, Alexandra, I mean, it's something that we can discuss, and I actually want to hand this over to you for a second. You know those positions where you know you're slightly worse and it's either I protect all my pieces passively or I try to be active? The move rook yep. fc8 is an active try saying, well, you could take on b7, but then my rook comes down to c2. So how do you tend to come up with these ideas when based on a position you feel a little uncomfortable with? So I'm guessing you think black is the one who feels uncomfortable here. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one defending the open file. Yes, for sure. Well, I think he's defending this well. He's trying to hold the position here, and he's bringing his king closer into the action. And this is actually a strategy I like to take as well. If I have certain pieces I can't move because they're stuck, I try to see what other pieces can I activate and try to improve my position with. Right, definitely. And on Hikaru's side, he made this move F3 because the bishop on E2, similarly, that's not the best piece on the board. So if it can get to the F3 square, it immediately attacks a pawn on b7 and is making use on a long diagonal. So both sides seem to be taking your advice, Alexandra, here, where black is rushing the king to the center, but is it going to be too late? That's sort of the essential question. Right, and maybe you could talk a little bit about what's what white strategy should be here with the pass d pawn. Yeah, so that's a, a great point. To, a great thing to point out is that this pawn d4 is either a huge strength a great asset or just a tremendous weakness. We say weakness because an isolated pawn is harder to protect. A pawn's best friend is another pawn. I say this every single stream, that if this pawn was on e3 rather than on f3, well, then that pawn protects another one on uh, d4. Instead, well, that pawn's by itself, but this white king is ready to run. King f2, king e3 coming, and at some point that pawn is ready to push from d4 to d5, and that is a clear pass pawn. Unlike the other pawns on the board, which need a little bit of poking and prodding to roam free, that pawn on d4 is clearly passed. An interesting decision on Black's part here to just trade off the rook, because now he's actually able to activate the rook from a8 to d8, where previously he was stuck in a corner very passive. 
Yeah, so it's going for that strategy, right? Instead of passive defense with a move like rook to b8, rook d8 mm -hmm. takes d4. So giving up two pawns for just one. But now e3 comes to mind for black saying, my e pawn, instead of just trading off on f3, that's going to be a pass pawn of my own. I was just talking about that d4 pawn having some potential. There's e3, mm -hmm. lands on the board. And now this rook can follow suit to d2. And I don't know, f5, f4 comes to mind as well to protect that pawn on e3. Perhaps that's the compensation needed instead of just to sit passively and worse, to get activity and try to make a draw this way. And adding a little bit to what you're saying here about compensation, it's interesting that Black thought his position was so much worse that he'd be better off sacrificing a pawn just to get some activity here. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's one of those important realizations that you have to make when, especially when you're playing Akari Nakamura, that I can't just sit and wait for him to bring the action to me. Sometimes the active defense is more important than the quantity of material. So giving white that extra pawn is less meaningful than just sitting with no actual plan. And so I really like Le Quang Liam's decision here to uh, go for this sort of end game. Yep. And there's a crazy position right now in Fabiano Caruana's game against Anton Smirnov. So okay. I think Whoa. we should take a look there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So firstly, you're happy again. I always point it out. It's a French. But this looks like a French gone horrifically wrong, horrendously wrong, atrociously awful. Do you want any more adjectives to be said here? Because I see a pawn missing from f7, a clear target on e6, and look at that sacrifice. Now knight comes to g6, and Alexandra, yeah. I wouldn't even take the rook. I'm saying my knight on g6 just entombed your queen on h7. And so I might play f4 with the idea of playing f5 soon, rook f1, f5. I mean, black's pieces are in terrible shape. I can't disagree with you there. And it looks like Fabiano is doing exactly what you said. He just pushed F4. Um, this is another example of a position where it's better for white to not accept the exchange here. And we've had this theme in the last couple of pro chess leagues. So I think it's always good to point out that sometimes a knight or a bishop can be worth more than a rook, such as in positions like these, where it's just holding down black's queen. Yeah, no, it, it goes to show that we know that rooks are worth five points and knights are worth three, but in this particular position, I disagree with those numbers as the rook has no open file to work with and the knight is just limiting, restricting that black queen on h7. And look at Fabiano go rook a1 to f1. He's going for f5. He wants to open this bishop on h3 up and well, black doesn't really have good de defenses here. Yeah, I'm trying to come up with a, a plan for black here, but it seems like he's in a lot of trouble maybe he's gonna move his king to c8 and then put it on a safe square like b7 or b8 just to get a little bit away from the attack but white's position is so strong here after f5 i'm not sure what's gonna happen yeah I mean, actually i'm sure what's gonna happen i'm not sure <laughs> what he can hope for <laughs> i mean so many good moves come to mind for white f5 bishop h4 yeah. followed by maybe g4 and f5 and f6 and just pushing the pawns through. Black has no active counterplay either, so it just looks like in a couple moves, Smirnov's position is going to completely collapse. So really not yeah. a good position at all for him. I'm not... So maybe this is time we take a look at some other top players. We haven't checked on Ding Li Ren yet. All right, let's go to Chef's House, right? And by the way, yes. Rakesh won. I think it's the first decisive game of the round. Rakesh Kulkarni beating Yun Shen Li. That is Shangdu's board four, and it's actually a checkmate on board for Rakesh, who does a oh, lot for chess.com. No. Uh, where is Chef's? There it is. Chef's House versus Fireheart. That's Adiban Baskaran with the white pieces. Dingli Ren with black. Dingli Ren just snags a pawn on A4, saying, Your rook on C1 does not scare me, even though my queen's on the same file. Right. And there's since you're robo hess and you're very good at calculating there's a ton of exchanges possible here how would you decide which one to go for and he just played knight takes f7 so knight takes f7 trying to take on g7 with discovery but what happens yep. if knight takes c3 here is white and queen e6 yes he is and there's wow. going to be some smothered checkmate attempts here a move like queen to b6 loses because knight h6 check King h8, and everybody should know this. Queen g8 check, you have to take with the rook. Knight f7 delivers a checkmate. That is a smothered checkmate. If Adiban can land a knockout blow here, I, I mean, I just don't see 
where this king thinks is going to escape this. Right. I mean, the only thing he can do is move his king or make space for his king by moving his bishop or his pawn here. But if he does that, then he's either losing the rook on d8 or facing more discovery threats. Sam Copeland. Sam, tell me you're here. I know you're here. This is going to be my vote for game of the week. You you hear Sam? So let me know in the chat. Everybody, that's Sam. Sam is always listening, so I'm sure he's going to catch you on that one. And it looks like Hikaru um, just drew his first game against Laquan Liam. Okay, so it looks like they just agreed on a draw here. That makes perfect sense. The king had to shuffle back. The black rook yep. too active. But let's go back to Chef's house because, yeah. I mean, I just don't see how he gets out of this with this brutal knight h6 check, queen g8 mate idea. Yeah, it's it's not looking good. I think it's lost. I, th um, yeah, I think he's completely lost. Good game, Adiban. Adiban's the man. What, yeah. There, I see Adiban's Sam Copeland. a very good player, playing for the Mumbai Movers. And okay, king of eight. I might even play knight g5 here and not take your rook, because when I go knight g5, there a knight takes h7 check, and it looks pretty painful. Not to mm -hmm. mention this knight on c3 is still pinned to your queen on um, c7. So knight g5 threatens queen f7 mate. You have mm -hmm. to defend that square somehow or run your king to e8, in which time I'll take the knight on uh, c3. And he played knight g5. Yep, and that's exactly what's happening here. Um, so after Adiban takes back the knight, he will have an equal material, but he has such a nice attack that he's sure to pick up something more later down the game. Yeah, just mate threats, h7 hanging, knight hanging, rook like coming to the e1 square, to the e file looks good. I just don't see moves for Dingley Ren, which, did I pick Dingley Ren? No, I did not pick Dingley Ren. Who did I pick? Yeah, you forgot to tell us who's on your fantasy screen, uh, fantasy team, my, not screen. My fa fantasy scream, what it is, uh, yeah. you know, horror flicks? You want to, I do scream. love horror movies, you know, Scream Queens. Well, okay. Scream Queens. Oh, isn't that a terrible movie? No, no, that's like the name of, um, like, for actresses who are in many horror films. They're known as Scream Queens. Ah, uh, okay. But there might be a movie as well. Hikaru, Wesley So, Georgie Margvelashvili, and Raymond Song are my four players that I've chosen for this uh, Battle Royale. Okay, I'll have to keep an eye on them and see how you're doing with this matchup. So pawn takes knight. So Adiban is going to, I think, win this game. We'll keep an eye on it. Maybe there's something mm -hmm. else that is worth our attention. But if not, we can just stay right here. This is a very fascinating game between two of the best players in the entire world. Yep, I'll take a look at the other games, oh. see if there's anything worth switching for. I think Wesley So's game deserves some sort of our, our attention here. Oh, yeah. That looks like an interesting game. Neither side has castled. Black looks like he's worse here. Wesley looks like he's worse, but it's too complicated to figure it <laughs> out right away. Yeah, I love this move, though, rook h3. <laughs> you know, rook h3 is a nice rook lift protecting the c3 square. So after knight d5, the queen isn't forced to protect the knight. It should perhaps go to d2, maybe. But Wesley is trying to claim that this white king in the center, just like the black king, is vulnerable. And this bishop on b7 is in a very strong piece on the long diagonal. It's super complicated, hard to really judge a position like this. I know white's up upon Alexandra, but mm -hmm. in, so, in many ways, you don't even count material here. You just try to say, am I going to get checkmated in the next seven moves? Or if not, then I can say, think, well, can I go h5, h6, and tie that rook on h8 down while pushing my pass pawn? So immensely right. complicated position. So it seems like what you're saying is if white's able to just march up his pawn on the h file, he will be better, but black also has a lot of attacking threats here that white will be too busy to take care of, hence why he played rook h3 to defend the knight. Exactly, right? Because that you know the yeah. white king doesn't actually want to castle queen side because then the black queen will go to a5 and try to checkmate. Queen e5, not at all what I was expecting because bishop d6, I mean, that was the, yeah my immediate reply. Now knight f4. Right. And you're just allowing black. This is what I didn't want from white's perspective is to allow this knight to f4. And I don't want to take on f4 with the bishop because if I do take on f4 with the bishop, now f6 is weak, d4 is weak. The dark squares will be vulnerable because you no longer have a dark square bishop. And that bishop on g5, although it looks like a big pawn, it's doing a great job protecting the f6 pawn and the diagonal uh, from c1 over to h6. So knight f4 here 
forcing that bishop off the board looks ideal for Wesley So. Yeah, that bishop on g5 is such a glue to this position that I was almost thinking about just letting white take the rook instead of the bish instead of trading off the bishop. But in that case, I'm sure the material imbalance will become a problem later on. Yeah, that's actually a very interesting point, Alexandra. That sometimes, if your position is really going to start collapse, oh, okay, bishop b4. That's not what we were expecting. Strikes me as odd because that bishop was on b4 before. Wow, was on b4 before. Okay, but it was there <laughs> just a move ago, and instead it went to d6 to chase the queen away from e5, which was the right decision, but there was no reason to put it back on the b4. So I still like black's position and chances here, but now mm -hmm. I think. White should have went queen to d2 and just said, okay, I made a mistake before. Let me just put that queen on the square. Cover, right. Cover and it's funny squares. because he can repeat the position again now. He can play bishop d6. Um, but it doesn't seem like Wesley has the idea of putting his bishop to f4. What do you think he's prioritizing here? Wesley? He's prioritizing, yeah. I think, the initiative. He just doesn't want to start trading pieces. He might feel that it won't be enough for him. So he's trying to have concrete threats. In this case, the knight on c3 requires defense at all moments. And he not just played rook c8. And to me, that's a challenge, Alexandra. What's your next move as white? And actually, I'm challenging you now. What would right. you play here? Would you play h5? Would you play bishop I mean, two? but then your queen might get trapped? I don't know. I think white has to try with g4 or h5 because if he just sits he is going to get steamrolled by wesley he doesn't have any other good ideas right. so h5 or g4 seems like the way to go yeah and we'll come right back here because kirill shevchenko is 24 seconds but i'm being told that dingley wren is surviving amazing defensive resourcefulness by him and when i look at the position um Black's not even down any material in an How did this happen? <laughs> so we will come back to this one in a bit because I think yeah. this Wesley So game is about to really heat up. But, I mean, I, this is the best thing possible for Dingley Wren. His e7 pawn is safe because of the bishop on d6. He does have all these weaknesses, c6 square, e6 square, but uh, the worst is certainly behind him. But back to Shevchenko, who has 11 seconds left. Alexandra, I'm really worried about White's position here, and the clock, of course, doesn't help matters at all. Right. So, well, what is Black's immediate threat? So we talked a bit about Bishop d6, but he didn't like that idea before. How is he going to be able to break through here? Well, sometimes you just got to try to break free from the chains. But thankfully for Wesley, so there, there's nothing really restricting him. He can go queen a5. He can consider bishop yeah. back to d6 and knight f4. We just talked about that before. Um, he can go even a move like, I was going to say king d7, and he went king to f8, which is much more sensible. But I was going to make the point that even a move like king d7 was a possibility. Okay, that has right. to be a bad move. Please play bishop d6 and knight f4. Because now the rook on d2 will be under attack at the end of that variation. Bishop d6. All right, he's just not Wesley is just not into that idea. Um, it seems like he moved his king away to just protect against future pins on the e-file. And now he's going for the... Queen a1. I mean, he's going to win. Queen a1. Bishop, yeah. Knight takes e3, yeah. I mean, no time I mean, for Shevchenko. this is a good idea. Yeah, this was a good idea. I, I do admit that. But uh, three seconds left for Shevchenko. There's just no way to, to uh, say, describe, to survive this impending attack. So, okay, how, where's the knockout punch? King is on e2. I need to end this game. Look at that move. King e8, just avoiding any checks on h6. Wow. Completely cutting off his opponent's compensation made in one queen e1 queen e1. <laughs> beautiful yeah he missed it he missed checkmate in one move <laughs> that's okay it happens see it happens to everyone no. i feel better about my games now yeah oh, he, and a chess hi he missed checkmate in one move queen e1 instead uh he's just taking the material and should easily win this position but when you miss checkmate in one move Sometimes uh, easy doesn't even cut it because it was nothing easier than delivering checkmate. And Dingley Wren has officially survived. He made a draw in that game. Sean Gupanos will be very Which happy. Which is fascinating, but... Wow. How do you miss checkmate in one move when you're 2,800 or whatever he is? Oh my gosh, it's almost like they're humans, Robert. No. We are <laughs> Robotes. We don't miss mate in one. Okay, but look at this. Exactly. He's, wait, wait. Yes, White's about to checkmate black. Queen e7 checkmate is about to happen. 
Oh my gosh. Does Black need to force a perpetual here to survive? Um, oh, if he's gonna... Oh, they're gonna get a draw and it'll be because Wesley missed a mate. Oh, no, he got... He, he ran right into okay. checkmate. He could not go King D1. He had no time. I well, thought he could block with Rook E3. He but definitely should have blocked. No, you're, you're 100% right. Rook to E3 uh, was the move to try to stay in this game because... Because if Bishop C4... Um, I mean, it doesn't look great. Well, then but... you go king d1, and after bishop b3 check, you go yep. king back to e2, I guess. So you yep. have... And if he checks with the queen on b1, you block with the bishop. Exactly. So it's not quite checkmate, and black is in danger of getting mated. So a huge missed opportunity for Kirill Shevchenko. A humongous missed checkmate in one. I mean, I don't know if we have blunder of the week or something like that, but... We should. We should bring that back. I remember we used to have that when there was chess center. Yeah. Oh, I have an interesting game for us. It's Moulton versus Criari. That is Nicholas Theodorou against Moulton Lee. And the reason I say okay. this is interesting, well, it was interesting before the resignation happened. The reason why Black resigned was you want to be able to push your A pawn, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. if you play B4, it takes an A3. The White Queen could continuously come after this rook on B7 to get it away from being behind the pawn. And alternatively, I can also just put my queen on a1 and then bring the white king over here to come t sacrifice my queen for the pawn because I am up two pawns on the king side. I would have played on if I was yep. black, but okay, you know, it's not my game. So we have two. Yeah, I, I think I would have played on as well here. Um, we have Daniel Chat, if you were playing, you guys better have played on as well because you should have that don't give up mentality. Um, oh, this game, Ray Robson game, he has five seconds versus five seconds here. Tegan Petrosian with the black pieces. Um, pff, both sides in time trouble. Even material on the... No, white is up a pawn. Can't count. White is up two now pawns now. he's up now, two. Oh, but no, he just, just dropped C3, so B4, A5 chain is, is collapsing. Right. Queen E5 check at the right moment will be annoying to deal with, but I would just take this pawn on B4 and now yep. play Queen... Uh-oh, that a, the queen on B6 is perfectly located, Alexander. Yeah, can black try to find a perpetual threat here? He's not finding it. A7. Uh-uh. Knight e5. You got to bring a knight into the action. There it is. Yeah, he has to try. Because now he's trying to go queen g3 check and then knight f3, but it doesn't work. There comes the second sister here. Yep. Okay. Queen h8. This is looking like queen it's e7. going to be mate in a few. Yep. Queen uh, f6 check and just trade the queens. Or queen h4 check. That's an even better way to trade the queens. You win a pawn. So yeah. Ray Robson. Nicely done. And we still have Naroditsky against Ahmed Adli. Naroditsky is completely winning with the white pieces here. Oh, and apparently uh, chess.com is gonna bring back Blunder of the Week and Chess Center. Who, who? That's exciting, Nick. Thanks for letting us know. Oh, wow. But oh. Naradisky won his game by checkmate, and that leaves- Do you like picking games right before <laughs> the, the result pops up on the screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, just like... Yeah, it's much more dramatic, It's you know? not a commentator's curse. It's like a commentator, I actually know what I'm talking about, so I'm going to click that game because I know it's coming to its conclusion. It makes you feel exactly. smart in a way. But Sahaz... Yeah, you want to catch it before it's the post-mortem. Grover had one second left when he made his Rook takes G3 move in this game. Oh, Rook man. B2, he's not going to win this game anymore. Rook takes B6 with check, and it looks like Black has botched this win because rook b6, now I'll sacrifice my rook for the e pawn, or king h8 and pawn to h7, mm -hmm. and stalemate myself. What's this going to happen? h7? There we go. I mean, we have seen what? quite a few dirty flags in the pro chess league. Hopefully that doesn't happen here. He seems like he's being careful. Yeah, and maybe he'll just, he's going to sacrifice his rook for the pawn, so even easier. But he could have go rook e4 check yeah. and just continue checking along the e file. That would do. Okay, I don't know why they're doing it like this way, but... I'm not sure. He's either, over takes but... two check. That's what he's waiting there for. There we the go. To come he was out. he was just trying to make it very clean and precise. Yeah, he baited him. <laughs> All right. So Archbishop's three out of four. Actually, I can pull up wow. that other scene just to make this is better when the round is done, so I can see who's done what across the board. Yes. Look at that beautiful scene change. Smooth transitions are on. I mean, I'm the one who just did that transition, but, you know, it's, it's all good. You can call me Aaron if you want. He No, he is the producer for a lot of the Chess.com events. He helps Danny Wrench do all the shows. But, um, yeah, he taught me a thing or two, so it, I got to tip my 
hat. I was going to say, you know, I don't have a hat on, but tip that hat to him. Thank okay. you. Okay, tip your imaginary hat over. Yep. Ooh, um, Seattle not doing well. We saw Tigre and Petrosian lose that game to Ray Robson, but yep. Nakamura and Margulis really could only draw their games, and Naomi Veshkansky lost. So they only have a one out of four start, and they're playing the Webster Windmill. So that is... Yeah, St. Louis Archbishops, wow. <laughs> yeah, they're... Three points, such a strong start. Well, they, they and stack... the games have just started. Yeah, they stack their lineup so that their top three boards are really forces, and their fourth board is... I don't know, like 1800 or something like that, which is a, still a good player. But when you're 1800 and playing against all these 2300s, it makes your life very difficult. And right. Dingley ran with the white pieces against Hikaru Nakamura. What a matchup. Um, I understand why it's so easy to stay up now with such an exciting match. You're not even feeling the fatigue. Right. And yeah, it's not that. And in, instead of you going to bed at 4 a.m. usually, no. Oh, don't. Don't let everyone know that. Hey, it's D <laughs> DJ Guards wondering, where is Ding Lee Ren? That's uh, my guy, Teddy. What's up, Teddy? Um, Ding Lee Ren, that's a great question. Let me ask our lovely staff, uh, anyone know where Ding is? Um, he's, he's just giving him time odds, you know? He wanted to make it a little bit more exciting. I mean, the best player to give time odds to, of course, it's Hikaru. Hikaru. It's the right? logical decision here. Honestly, he's just so slow, you know. It might be like disrespectful in a way. Not, obviously, not intentional. Dingler just wasn't at his computer. Yeah. But maybe that's the way to get Hikaru mad. And when maybe mad Hikaru is bad Hikaru. So I don't know. I'm just speculating. <laughs> mad here. Hikaru is bad Hikaru. At least it rhymes. Look at it. H6. My <laughs> I told you. Wow. I told you. He's like, all right, you're trying to give me time odds. Let me give you move odds. Well, you're white, there so you already go. have move odds. There we go. Let me play H6. The disrespect is real. And we are going to have. This is. He's converting it to a French line, so it's not that bad, but it is a little cheeky to play it first move. So when anyone says not that bad, there was a. I played a game <laughs> against Alex Yermolinsky, and I had a terrible position. And after the game, I was talking with some friends, and I was like, it's not that bad. And Alejandro Ramirez, that is Grandmaster Alejandro Ramirez, goes, not that bad. <laughs> not that bad. Your position was terrible. And was like berating me and just like, your position was awful. How could you think it was anything but the worst thing you've ever seen? And well, okay, H6 is clearly not a good move, but at the same time, a move like Bishop E7 can transpose this into a sort of standard French-like structure. Or and, a, a sideline for the French. But. Right. And look at Hikaru just pre-moving things out here, essentially. And all right, There this, we go. This h6 move, maybe not the worst thing in the world. I just think it's slow. Because in some of these lines, you play g5, and you don't mm -hmm. even need the pawn in h6 to begin with. So what was the point of playing right. h6 as just waste of tempo? That's fair, because maybe he would have been able to push g5 and h5, and now he is going to be lost. Um, sorry, not lost. He'll be down a tempo here. Um, these positions are really tricky to play as black. Yes. You're always having to watch your king's safety, and you're really betting on the fact that you're going to get a solid attack on the king side here. I don't know. I mean, h6 just feels feels like it has to be punished, right? Just You can't play h6 against a super grandmaster and get away with it, but maybe a car who can. I certainly wouldn't be able to. Heck, I couldn't get two free moves. And, oh, okay, I don't want to be so hard on myself. But Yeah, don't be so hard on yourself. You know what I'm saying. It's just like... Robo Hess could get it. a great position. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so now the E5 pawn feels vulnerable, right? Because you've just mm -hmm. given away your D pawn, which was protecting the E5 right. square. So now I feel like Black's position actually isn't so bad, though. He's going to have to yeah. be careful. His king's going to be stuck in the center. I would not like to have the black side of this position, that's for sure. Well, it's good to see Hikaru playing a French. Just shows that it's still an opening top players consider. Just throwing that out there, Hess. Except he played knight f3, h6, and then played a French. The ah. French is so OP, he had to nerf it with h6. <laughs> Wishful thinking by you, for sure. I think that works. All right, I think Hikaru was going to be fine in this game, but uh, let's, let's try to see if there are any other interesting games because right. there's so many players... From so many teams, um, the, maybe one of the 
the board fours or something that I haven't. Because what about Daniel Naraditsky and Fabiano Caruana? Hey, that definitely sounds like a board four, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I, I mean, mean I, I don't. You know, it's a good matchup. I don't blame you in the slightest. It's just I was about to say, you know, it's very easy to get locked in with the one uh, top boards, you know, the one seeds because well, they're the best players and we want to see their games anyway. And frankly, they play the best chess. But I was just gonna wait. What what's happening in this game? Isn't five men just have two bishops? I mean, Fabiano has two bishops. Yeah, Fabiano is definitely going to win this game. That is good. <laughs> I mean, it just I was like, look at the position. Black's down no um, development. Like Black is doing totally mm -hmm. fine there. Black can play for pawn b4 at some point to break open the queen. So I made a5 and then b4. But I just, yep, a5. I just don't like White's position at all here. What is Naroditsky doing? Yeah, I wonder why he allowed this exchange. Oh, because he traded off the queens on move you know, whatever. Essentially allowed yeah. the queen exchange around move seven, and then they didn't get traded for a little while. But this is, how do I frame this? I call this giving too much respect to your opponent because you should just play your normal stuff instead of just saying, oh, I'm a little scared. Let me trade the queens off. And that's what... Ooh, you're thinking game. Fabiano was... Sorry, Daniel was scared. 100%. 100%. I mean, it is nerve-wracking to play a world champion challenger. So I do understand that. I, I don't know. Maybe he'll pull off a good result here. We'll have to come back. But being scared is the best way to lose a game because you start playing yeah. this weird, timid chess, and you're not just playing the best moves. You're playing the safest moves. And sometimes the best moves are a bit risky, but they're good for whatever reason. So I just don't like right. this stylistically, and I've seen many players do this before, and I just love Black's position here. And this is, like I said, it's not like Nerdisky or anything tragically wrong here there was no right horrendous move but black just got a better position by doing nothing so what was the benefit of playing this queen trade and then just getting a terrible position so rook b5 great move bishop c4 he'll just go rook a5 eventually he'll go c5 to open up the bishop on f6 because if you look at the position what's black's biggest strength it's that i have a dark square bishop and white does not mm -hmm. so here's rook a5 perfect sense and now if I play c5, I can take back on c5 with the rook, or I can take this pawn on b2 first if you're going to play d4 takes c5 because that pawn's hanging, and then behind it is a check on c3. So, yeah, terrible yeah. position well, for Daniel. Well, you're obviously all for Fabiano's position here, but what if you were playing as Daniel Naroditsky? You're not down material, but you are down strategically. What would your plan have to be here? That is the toughest question you've ever asked me. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even kidding. I just hate this position. Okay, so he went bishop d3. I guess he's trying to regroup somehow. I would play c5 as black and say I'm opening up my bishop. I mean, I think, honestly, white is, like, getting kind of close to being lost. And that sounds ridiculous considering where we are. But, like, let's say I go c5 and mm -hmm. you take with your pawn and I take with my pawn back. You'd yeah. love to play knight to e5 to close off my bishop. But then bishop g5 check comes on the board and your king is running out of squares. You go king d1, you get checkmated on the back rank with rook a1 checkmate. And otherwise you have to block with your rook and lose material. So, yeah. Yep. Somebody in the chat on chess.com is saying Naroditsky just getting slow rolled. That is what's happening here. I mean, 100% what's happening. It's really, I, I hate seeing things like this because... I see Daniel Naroditsky. I, I know his rating's higher than mine. He's a very good player. And when I play anybody on this earth, I'm not afraid to play them. Like, I'm, I'm serious. That doesn't mean I'm going That's to do That's because well. you don't have emotions, Hess. That is you, very true. You go in. If you've lost your first three games, it doesn't matter. It's a new tournament. If you're playing Magnus, you're like, I'm not intimidated. Yes, be more like Hess. That should be... It's, uh, it's everybody's chess it's, role. It's like the State Farm commercials or like the robo ag agents. And he's like um, saying like they don't have emotions so they can't connect with people. Yeah, it's. Oh, uh, I never saw that, but it does apply here. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, I'm not yeah, to call myself. Yeah, you need to enter the agent. computer chess championship. I totally agree, real Greco. Yeah, I would just get destroyed. So B3 play. But you wouldn't be intimidated to play any of the computers. No, so. I'm, I'm intimidated by not a single chess player on this, in this planet. Like, if I played Magnus Carlsen, of course he's expected to beat me, but what do I have to lose? It's a game of chess, so life goes on. <laughs> All right, let's go to Nakamura. We, All right, let's go back to Hikaru's game. 
How how is it going? Not well. How did he castle on the king's side? Uh, he did it, and he might regret it later because his pawn on c6 is is vulnerable. In fact, could have been captured last move. For some reason, he didn't capture it. Oof. I presume that he thought after knight c6 last move that black would play queen b6. The knight would retreat back, I guess, and then the e5 pawn would be a problem uh, eventually with g4 coming in. So Dingley Ren playing what looks to be just good moves, and he's up a pawn. So I hate yep. Hikaru's position. You want a motion from me? Don't play h6 on the first move against a super grandmaster. I think that's not emotion. That's just common sense or logic reasoning. But let's go with that. Um, I think Hikaru still might be able to save this. The e5 pawn looks like it's going to hang at some point. He does have the open c file and the open b file. Maybe he'll be able to pick up a pawn. Even though his king his kingside pawns are really expanded, he's not under any serious threats yet. So while it's worse... Hikaru is a very tricky player. We know that. Yeah, you're being super optimistic for Hikaru. You said an open C file that Hikaru can use. I see an open C file that Dingley Ren can use because his rook's already there. So That's fair. That's fair. The C file does look a lot more dangerous for black here. I mean, dangerous as in he's in trouble. This is bad. Should we go away? I can't look at this anymore. It hurts. Okay, let's look at a different game and, and come back after he saves the position. He's not going to save the position. Well, we'll see. He's not, um, he's not going to. I mean, I respect you tremendously as a person, but uh, he's not going to save it. Just, you know, we're going to have a disagree on this one. Oh, man. Um, okay, so you said that you wanted to see some board fours. Was that right? Let's go to board four. So I see Rakesh playing against Momentine. That is Raymond's mm -hmm. song with the black pieces against Rakesh Kulkarni. And what is going on here? White is up a pawn, and that's a pass pawn on C6. And it's white's move. So, c7, maybe? Can I just... Okay, he can't protect it in any way. Also, rook f3 at some moment is going to hurt you too, because f7 is a problem. Um, I feel like yeah. I'm just going to go c7 here and just start pushing my pawns with running rook b8 and things like that. Right, so after rook c7, rook c6, do you want to continue with your rook on b7 to protect it or do you have a better idea there well if i go rook b7 i think i'm gonna lose oh sorry rook. not hanging the rook just <laughs> kidding JK. i was just testing you robert did i pass you passed so far you're right a rook f3 looks more scary <laughs> yeah well i mean the reason why also why i want to go rook f3 is so let's say i go c7 you go rook c6 i go rook f3 if you go knight f4 to e6 now my knight in c3 can go to d5 and protect my c7 pawn as well so it gave me an additional option to defend that passer and g3 was played by Rakesh, which can't be like a bad move because white's position is so good, mm -hmm. but probably not the best move. That's, that's what I'm gonna go with. And okay, white will go rook b6 next and protect the pawn that way. And this still looks great for Rakesh Kulkarni, but I thought pushing the pawn, it's just like a, it's a 20% rule. If your pawn is on the fifth or sixth rank, I believe, they say like one out of every five times, you should push it, and more realistically, what it means is you should always be considering it. Which I'm sure he was considering it, given how much he spent on this move. Um, maybe it was a little bit of a precise line, so he decided to just go into this and a slower play a position that's better. Yeah, no, you, you're probably right. Um, it's a position looks nice. I would love to have the white pieces here. And um, speaking of nice positions, I'm going over to Fabiano Caruana's game because he's up a pawn now, but it's opposite colored bishops. So that might give Daniel Nerdiski some chances. But yeah, it doesn't look easy here. Bishop f4 was a good move. Yep. White is really a sitting duck here. Um, there's no way he can make progress on his position. Maybe he just has to shuffle his pieces here. He, he doesn't even want to put his king on the g file. Nope. Rookie one, uh, rookie two, sit and wait. I feel like you're just going to run out of squares eventually. Like, if you go rookie yeah. one, I'll probably like bishop to d2. And just like, where's your rook going now? Right. It just feels so uncomfortable. The d1, he's just going to have to keep moving his rook. I guess. Just... And then he's going to be shuffling on the first rank to b1 to d1. 
I mean, he just doesn't have another plan. The problem, yeah, that's true. And the problem for Black is like, where do you make a secondary target? I mean, there's not right. even really a f full on target here, but mm -hmm. I need to create, like, the H3 pawn is sort of weak, but I can't get my other rook around to attack it. So I think that, you know, rook A1 check, rook back to E1, you can trade one pair of rooks here uh, quite easily. But if we do trade on this square, then how is black going to take advantage of the other weaknesses? Or is somehow Nerdis going to hold? But from the very start of this game, it's been all Caruana. And uh, I, like I said before, really don't like what Nerdis has done here. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Um, so maybe we should take a look at another game. Okay. And come back to this one. We haven't looked at Wesley's game yet this round. Wesley. 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 Someone's a fan. Wesley. You have some emotion. Yeah, I mean, Wesley's just an amazing chess player, and I look at positions like this, and I'm like, okay, Wesley's going to play queen c6 and win an endgame. That's all I say. That's all I need That's to say. That's all you need to know. Yeah, then, right. let's go to a different game now. That's all you need to know. Wesley's playing queen c6. They're going to trade queens, and Wesley's going to win. Does that sound, Easy. Does that sound accurate to you? Commentary by Robo Hess. I mean, it just feels, it feels right, man. It just it feels right. Because the point of queen c6 is if you trade me on c6, then my b-pawn lands there, and I'm cementing, well, your c6, c7 pawn's already cemented, but let's just put that on the board. Now my knight's coming to b5 to pressurize the c7 pawn. The e5 pawn's a little awkward as well. My rook can come to a1 and to a7. I just don't really like black's position in this endgame. And I, I looked a little shocked because he took on e5 instead, which... It looks like it could just be a free pawn. Um, obviously, the first thing to look there is the bishop on g7. Does he have any pin threats against the queen? Obviously, since it's Wesley, you assume probably not. That's... But this looks a lot scarier than having than your variation. Yeah, maybe it's just good. Can he take an f4 now, too? He's just going to keep putting his queen under fire and say, I don't care what you do, because queen takes f4 is just another pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wesley's a brave, brave man. Queen takes a four, just take it. Eat it. allowing all of Black's pieces to be super active here. So yeah, Black's down two pawns, but at least his pieces are very strong. Yep. And well, someone just mentioned Ray Robson's game is interesting, so I figured we might as well take a quick look over there. Yep. Uh, just to see what's going on. Whoa. Priyadarshan Kanapan with the Black pieces is missing many pawns in front of his king, but he is up a minor piece. But when I see this position, Alexandra, what strikes me the most is the knights are on a5 and c5 and the bishop's on b7, not defending this black king. In fact, mm -hmm. e5 trying to blast right through, this feels problematic for black. Very problematic. Right. Yeah, a lot of times in attacks, you want to see how many of the defending side's pieces are close to the king. And here, he's missing three or four pieces, however you want to count it. So it doesn't really matter that white is down a minor piece. Here, he's just not going to feel it. He has enough for the attack. Oh, and I think black's just getting checkmated. Because, well, if you take with the queen on f6, then yeah. white can probably even do something like bishop d2 to c3. Uh, because the, okay, maybe just take on c5 even. I mean, there's so many good moves here, but bishop d2 was the first one that came to mind. The point is that mm -hmm. the black queen has to stay on f6, otherwise the king will just really get checkmated quickly. So uh, after bishop d2, if you play queen d4 check, I think I can just move my king to h1, h2, one of these squares. And if you take my bishop on d2, well, then your king is just in a world of hurt here. I can't disagree with that. Black is in a world of hurt here, and it's starting to get painful to look at his position here. Ooh, e8's hanging. That's a full rook. That's just yeah, lost. he just take the free rook. I think it's, it's over. Yeah, this works out. This works out for... Um, you're right, Hikaru did lose that game. Um, I'm 0.000000% shocked. Is that... Did, do you need another decimal point? Uh, yeah, just one more. Just, okay. You know. Well, just, you know, I just didn't... I rounded up, okay? So that's how little I'm shocked that he lost that game. I mean, you can't play like that against Dingley Ren. Or, right. Um, but speaking of somebody who is saving their position, unlike Hikaru, yeah. uh, the Daniel Naradisky game and Fabiano game is interesting because um, Fabiano... Wait, what? Ex 
exchanged a, a rook. Sorry, he's down in exchange, but he does have two pawns to compensate, but he also has two pairs of doubled pawns. What happened in this game? I'm going to have to go back a little bit. Like, things look really nice for black, and then mm -hmm. somehow he sacrificed his rook. Oh, he got his rook trapped. He got his rook trapped. No, Fabiano, don't do that. So, Oh, man. Naroditsky with the sneaky play there and trying to yeah. defend the light square. So let's catch up to the game because, all right, right I don't think black can ever lose this position just because you can just continuously move your rook to G8, to C8, to A8, to C8. To G8. You get the point. I don't have to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rook C3 is always going to be a possibility. Then you're on Rook right. D3. No, White is definitely the one who is fighting for a draw here. And one of his pieces is always going to be tied to C2. His king is likely to be tied to H4. Or I guess he doesn't even mind because he'll take D4 here. Look at how many isolated pawns Black has. All six yeah, pawns are Yeah, it's really isolated. painful to look at. This is a pawn structure nightmare. Yeah, this is her. Ugh. Forget about this it. <laughs> Hess and Botez, a great team. I mean, that's just Thank that's just a fact of life, right? It, it, a fact of life? Yes. Yeah. You're giving us the credit we deserve. I like it. Okay, so Daniel Naradisky, if you were playing white here, would you just try to get a draw as quickly as possible, or would you be bold and try to trick the one and only Fabiano Caruana here? You can't trick him. Fabiano is incapable of being tricked. You think I don't have emotion? Have you ever seen Stone Cold Fabiano play chess? Guy oh just... man, is he like the Robo Hess updated edition? He's, I mean, he's been upgraded 20 times over. He's like version 27. <laughs> okay, eight, that's or, not true. Version 28, 27 to be precise, actually. Um, so they're going to make a draw, it looks like. Although if I'm yeah. Caruana, I'm just going to wait. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm not going to repeat moves. Nerditsky is thinking. Every move he's thinking, you know, three, four, five seconds. And mm -hmm. look at Nerditsky's clock. Fabiano has a minute and 20 seconds more, has no risk whatsoever in the position. And, okay, I think you always have to think, can I keep shuffling back and forth from H2 to G2? Or at some moment, Nope, I did a wrong arrow. Is black going to take this pawn on h4? I wouldn't take on h4 because you lose d4, which is more important. But it yep. just goes to show that white does have to start considering things. At every time. I mean, it looks like black might be able to play rook d5 here and try to protect d4. Again, he can try to be a bit tricky. Um, but Narodisky is also, you know, one of the best bullet blitz players. So I'm sure he knows how to hold his own in hard positions with time pressure. Yep. Yep. So, okay, Nerdisky, like you said, he's he's a menace in the Arena Kings and things like that. So, okay, we can go to somewhere else. I see Wesley So has a minute and 27 seconds. His opponent has seven. Oh, this okay. is going to be fun. Wesley's going to win this game for sure. It's either... Wow, this is a fun end game. Somehow, Vinay Bot's going to have a perpetual check or like some kind of repetition. Or was he just going to win? Because the knight and rook are going to keep moving forward. If, mm -hmm. if that g6 pawn get Wait a second. Check. Okay. Rook d1. It traps the queen. Rook d1 to h1. Oh, what a beautiful move. Pl the qu oh. No! 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 Play rook d1. Trap the queen. Has <laughs> this anger. So Wesley has... Now missed a maiden one and trapping Rook the queen. Rook D1, here. queen H2, Rook H1, that queen is trapped. But maybe, did black not have any way to get out? No, because he could have played queen B1 instead of moving his yes. king. So he could have untrapped his queen, actually. No! And no! <laughs> How? Somebody... Mm, he's going to have to donate some rating points to Goodwill. I mean, you just... <laughs> you, you can't miss maiden one and then miss a queen trap. And then get to keep all of your 27, whatever. 100 points. That's just not fair. No, no, no. No. And, Hess overload. And I'm a, I was just talking how I'm a big Wesley So fan. I love his chess. Okay, he still might win this game because it's actually very difficult right. for Black to defend here. White has pushed his pawns. He can always maneuver his knight in. His rook can just stay on d6. But there's going to be so many checks. Uh oh, four seconds left for Vinay Bot, by the way. Yeah, I, I'm looking at his clock. Knight it's d3. not looking so good. 
Put your knight in the ear of king. Knight d3, then move your... I mean, he, he's probably going to blunder under time pressure. It's a very hard position to play, but it is a little shocking that we saw something missed yet again. Yeah. He's... Maybe he'll find a magical perpetual, and Wesley is going to be a little bit more careful with the tactics in one. He could do some puzzle rush, you know? But Wesley doesn't even have a move here. Like, his, all of his pieces are tied down in some way, shape, or form. The knight in f2 is under attack. Where's your knight going to h3? Then you usual queen e2 check, and I don't really see how you're gonna escape all my checks right yeah. where else can the knight go h1 still same issue with uh, queen e2 gosh wow well he does seem to have a perpetual here I mean, um, the knight on h1 <laughs> knights are great defenders but not when they're in the corner like that right um we finally found the worst position for the knight on this board so upset yeah um that... well hey this was the justice the world deserves he did donate some rating points are you feeling happy that at least there is some legal system here not legal system but some I, fairness i mean a legal system is usually pretty important just gonna mm -hmm. throw that out there you know sometimes you, you need that to ensure that all right anarchy doesn't take over I'm sorry. I'm just so upset about this. Legal system. I didn't mean to say legal system. Oh, Abacus Finch is saying it. Hey, Hess is upset. But on the bright side, you get to cool down for a, a little bit before the next game start. I'm going. And then you're going to see more and more blunders in one, and you're just going to overload. Right. Here it is, everybody. Move 55. Rook d6 was played. Instead of rook d6, play rook d1. This knight protects the rook. The queen has one safe square on h2. And then rook h1 is checkmate to your queen. That knight protects the rook. Your queen is absolutely trapped. And so why do you think mistakes like these happen at the GM level? You have to give an explanation. Uh, you have to give an explanation. I have to. Okay. Well, actually, and You can't avoid the question by saying something. No, I do have an explanation for it. It's because the black queen, why black missed it? You want to get a perpetual check, right? Endless amount of checks. So you think yeah. that having your queen close to the enemy king is often the best way to do that. But actually, against a knight, having your queen close by is, generally speaking, not a good thing. Look at the g1 square. The queen has no checks from here because the knight covers h1. The knight covers mm -hmm. d1. It's not like your queen can go to g4. My knight is covering that. My king is as well. So you actually have no checks nearby with my, my knight protecting my king. That's why knight is such a good defender. Right. Um, it but why did Wesley miss rook d1? Why did Wesley miss... Um, rook d1 to h1 because um, okay I guess as I'm thinking about it more it's a retreating move and his mm -hmm. rook was so active in putting pressure on black's pawn on g6 and keeping the king stuck that he was just continuing to go with that plan go rook d6 and go yep. um, sorry let me pull up the actual game again he wanted to just go e4, push that pawn, and he was likely thinking the game was already closing in on draw territory, that he didn't mm -hmm. think maybe this queen could possibly get trapped. That's my explanation. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe he did have a little bit of tunnel vision building on what you said because he was so focused on one idea and he was never expecting in a position like this that he'd be able to trap black queen, Black's queen, right? It's pretty unusual. Yep. So maybe that was why. So, okay. Just uh, let me fix this. I just had to refresh the page. And <laughs> Judge Botez is now cross examining Robo Hess. You are. Oh, let me fix this. I am now. forcing Robo Hess to consider emotion and human error. Yep. That's how you train the, the robos. Yep. And so, okay, well, I got to fix the screen capture now. I listened to oh, yeah. the chess.com staff. Never do that again. Oh, gosh. I'm going to do this just right here. That's okay. Deep um, the right. games haven't started yet, so we're all good. But, uh, you know, it was just perfect the way it was. They're like, oh, can you just refresh and try to try this out for me? It's, we're getting some OBS preview as well. That's fun. Yeah, well, it's all fixed now. I hope you're happy. You know who you I are. <laughs> that's not directed towards me so i can giggle a little bit okay maybe we can look at the standings yeah i'm on some random blitz game now because there is a break in the action 
Yeah, no worries. Um, can't look at this has half a point out of two. Oh, look, this board got messed up too. Let me fix that as well. So we'll look at the standings here while yep. I fix this board. Love I'll it. point. I'll look and see some of the other surprising results so far. Oh, let me actually follow multiple games to see how this ruins everything even more. Oh, I love it. Making me do this live. This is why I do things in advance and then I don't have to refresh um, the board. All right. <sighs> Breathe. Uh, let me fix everything here. This one's It's all good. good. No, it's it's just it hurts so bad. See, you oh. said I don't have emotion, but here comes the emotion. Yeah, it is annoying to deal with the layouts because it changes when you're looking at multiple games versus one. So yep. But there it's we go. It's a little annoying. I'm not changing it's anything exactly. anymore. Got I got the standings up. Everything is all good. Yep. I was half the woman I used to be. How could you do that to me, Robert? You cut off half my face. It's okay. You it, kept my better half, I so cut, I forgive I cut you. Half your face? Yeah, but we're good. Wait, when did I do that? When you were tweaking the layout. I still see you in your entirety, so. All right. I don't know. I'm upset. Oh, let's go to. <laughs> Dude, oh, that's not also not pro chess league game. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, it's also so hot in my apartment right now. It's everything. Yeah, obviously, because the computer is overheating, Ro Robo has. We need to get you some water coolers. No, I, I, have, I have water here. I'm going to drink that right now. There you go. Hess, angry. Um, apartment, heat up. I actually have a space heater under the table. It's very enjoyable because my feet freeze. But Fabiano is, is starting his game in an interesting fashion. He has preparing, he's preparing for a kingside attack here, about to castle queenside. That'll be a fun game. Um, yeah. No, sorry. I was just uh, reading something. Yeah, no. Fabiano Caruana here with the white pieces, the rook on g1. We always talk about this hook, right? This pawn on h6 is a hook. Yep. And that means that g5 pries open the position because that pawn h6 there is very helpful. So, Alexandra, prediction time. You make me talk about my fantasy chess team. I know you probably didn't fill one out. What's your prediction for this game? Well, I am going to say that Fabiano, the player rated 200 points higher, also playing the white pieces, is going to win here. I know it's a pretty out there opinion to have, but I... That's where I would put my money. Uh, okay, that seems like a pretty safe bet. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm learning to think of things logically instead of emotionally, as you have been teaching the chat, so. I mean, you always think of things both <laughs> logically, and I don't like how these, you know, okay, now we're about to get into some kind of deep things here, but logic and emotion don't have to be these like opposite ends of a spectrum like they're you know people think that oh i'm logical and so i'm right people you know, like you're emotional so you're wrong no nah, you know that's, that's i'm not buying that but i am buying fabiano caruana's position you see that like segue right there is like let's try i, I, I do chess. and honestly that was a pretty deep speech i feel like you almost passed the touring test with that one so i i respect it i appreciate that thank you yeah I mean, Alan would be proud. So knight of six back. Okay, so what the real pluses of the position for white is that there's rook on g1. If this bishop moves from g5, it opens up an attack on the pawn on g7. Also, and I was about to say, f4, he plays f4. By going f4, I can start trying to attack in the center and perhaps even at the right moment go for pawn to f5. So after knight c4, Alexander, oh, he took it before I could ask you. Would you yeah. have taken that knight? I definitely would have taken that knight, um, even though the light squared bishop was helping control quite quite a bit on both sides of the two diagonals. The knight on c5, c, c4 was really dangerous. Yep. And so here, white got rid of that knight and opened up the second rank for the queen. So that queen can slide over to a square like f2 at the right moment if necessary. So... Uh, I like the flexibility. King b1 is always a useful move in these type of positions just to mm -hmm. get your king um, away, further away from the center. It's a safer square. King. Okay, I just, I'm just going to watch Fabiano play. I don't need to talk anymore, right? No, I, I, we really enjoy the talking here. Um, Black had to castle queenside here because he wasn't going to stay in the center, and the king side 
was pried open by the hook that you mentioned earlier. Yep. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit about the pawn structure here. Who do you think has a better pawn structure? So I would say that in terms of purely in terms of pawns, white mm -hmm. has a bit of vulnerable pawn e4 square. But in terms of squares, white has superior control. Because if, say, this bishop takes on f6, and the, oh, that arrow is not supposed to be, the bishop takes back on f6, and we trade on this square here, at some point I want to throw my knight into d5 and say, I have light square control because you only have one light square bishop, and my second knight will come into the game. So, for example, knight b3 to d2 is a move that I'm always considering. And if I can, say, bring this knight from d2 into the f1 to the e3 square, then I'm really trying to get in to d5. So pawn situation, I prefer black's pawns, but in terms of the squares left behind, I definitely prefer white. Although knight h5 was a good move, coming after the f4 square. Uh, that's a good way to think about it. I haven't heard somebody explain it like that before. Mm -hmm. Instead of just looking at the pawn structures, also looking at the control, and then how is it going to help your pieces develop in terms of the space. So I think uh, that was a pretty good teacher Hess moment. You know, I have those every now and then. Usually they're not done at 11.35 p.m. Eastern, oh, 11.36, yeah. excuse me, p.m. Eastern time. But sometimes you're on call in the late hours. I feel like a doctor, just. Basically a doctor. Yeah. Um, and I just switched to Daniel Naroditsky and Ariban's game. Okay. This one was looking pretty interesting because Whoa. white is missing a G pawn. Yep. Um, there should Black be, should be a G pawn on G3, but it's gone. Yeah, yeah. where did the pawn go? Ooh. It's very weird because there's also no pawn on the E file. So how did those pawns get traded here? Hmm? So I just uh, rewound the game a little bit and showed how it happened. It looked like Black had a pawn on F4 that was captured, and then Black captured back. And I love Naroditsky's position here because he has dark square control over the board for the rest of the game. This bishop on G2. It's unopposed because there's no light square bishop for black, but where's it going? Right, The queen blockades its diagonal. I can always capture that bishop if I'm ever super scared, and d3 is a clear target in this position, not to mention a3 will also become a clear vulnerability in white's camp. Yep, I think this is actually similar to the game we were looking at earlier, where if you're looking purely at black's pawn structure, he has an isolated pawn on a4, D4 seems a little bit overextended since it can't be protected by C5 right away. But if you look at the space his pawns are helping provide here, the knight on C5 allowing the knight to go to B3, limiting white's knight, then you start to see that it's also very advantageous here. Yeah, for sure. That's actually a great way of putting it, that it looks like black's pawn, for example, you mentioned in particular the pawn D4. It's gone a long way. It can't be defended by a buddy of it, you know, another pawn. But yeah. it has given black so much space for the pieces, and the knights on f4 and c5, they can't be kicked out of their current perches. And so it looks like really nice position for black. I don't even see a good move for white. If I have to go bishop f1, I think crying would be the correct emotional response. But since you call me robotic, well, I don't know. I'm just guessing. And uh, i got to give a shout-out because we have over 4,100 people tuning in here. We um, love to see people checking out the Pro Chess League. That's what this is, the Pro Chess League. And what that means, well, here's the schedule for you. We have two days a week we'll have matches for you, and two, two times a day on those two days a week. So that's four different time slots every single week. And uh, we're in the Battle Royale. It's February 19th. Well, it depends on what part of the world you are. But in Eastern and Pacific American time, it is still the 19th, and we're in that Battle Royale. Yep, the Battle Royale is a very exciting format on the already exciting Pro Chess League because the games are faster. Uh, the teams are all having their boards play the equivalent boards on the other team, so board one versus board one. We're seeing a very strong matchup today. We have some of the top players both in the world and in Rapid and Bullet. So if you guys are new to chess, this is a good place to be. Come say hi in chat. Ask us how the horsey moves, and we'll all become friends. Yep, and I just put up all the logos because I love that Moscow Wizards logo. Just, you know, I can't get enough of it, but it's some great design work by the chess.com staff. But without further ado, chess, 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 chess. No, okay, we're not chess, singing. Chess, but... chess, 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 chess.
Yeah, that one's better. Bishop F1 played. Oh, are you gonna cry? No, but I should. I mean, you should. Just a um, horrendous looking move to have to play, but okay, it has its clear purpose of defending D3. And I would say that strategically, black is completely winning here, especially if these knights were traded. Let's say I could just throw these knights in C5 and A5 off the board. This knight on F4 can never be kicked out because I can always protect it with my pawn in G5, and it's going to be a great knight dominating a terrible bishop. So, um, yep. Yeah, doesn't look fun. So I, no, it doesn't look fun at all. I'm going to try to hop around and see if there are more interesting games that are not just crushing on one side here. Yep, let's try to see. I see Fabiana Caruana's game. Well, a lot has happened here, but it looks like Black's king is opening up. That's Ahmed Adli. His king is looking yep. less safe by the move. Rook g5 now for white. Might even just win a pawn because e5 will be attacked a third time and only two defenders are in the position for black. So really liking Fabiano Caruana's position. But let's... Uh, he, he went rook g5. Let's let's give everybody a shot here. Let's I'm going to pick a random game of players we might not even have looked. Well, actually, let's go to Dingley Rand. I, I, th I think we should also check out Hikaru's game at some point okay. because it's a very interesting pawn structure. At some point uh, is now. <laughs> that's some, just a friendly suggestion, you know? Um, cause look at these pawns. Hikaru has a pawn on F4. He just pushed G5, allowing queen takes F4 here because after the tw queen trades, he's going to take on E6. Um, yeah, it, it looks like a very fun position because then he also has the pass C pawn, which is a little more advanced than black's pass D pawn here. Love this move queen F5. And the reason why I love it is because it's... It, yeah. If we had taken on f4, as you were just pointing out, we trade queens and yep. e6 falls, and then d5 is probably next. But instead, he plays queen f5, and now after rook e5, he's going to take that rook on e5, and he's going to trade queens in a fancy way, but in a way that allows black to gain the upper hand after rook f8 check. The rook will come to f5, and down goes one of white's very extended pawns. So, Yeah, this was a great move, just blocking it off a little bit more. Yep, looks yeah. looks nice now for Smirnov. And this rook got, for Hikaru might go rook a1 to d1 to d4 to defend f4, but it's clear counterplay for Smirnov, and I'm sure he missed this move queen f5. Yep, and you were saying that you wanted to go to a random game. I know we've been following a lot of top players, and I feel like I've been pressuring you into these games. Some people in chat were joking about it. I'm also joking. But if there's another game you want to see, we can also do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, let's just, I'm going to pick a random username that I haven't seen yet. Blue Wizard versus Chess Fat Bear. Hey, there we go. Look, that's Grandmaster Dennis Boros versus Grandmaster Zhao Jun. So pretty good yep. players. Can't complain about the matchup. And what is going on here? Black is up a pawn, but there's a rook on the seventh rank on F7. <laughs> What, what happened? Oh, I'm just laughing at crazy coffee man's comment. <laughs> um, okay. I'm sorry. I'm back. Sometimes chat makes you laugh and you lose attention for a second. <laughs> oh, I see what's happening there. I'm getting blamed for things. Love it. Love it. That, that is very funny. Um, no, it's always my fault. No, but I, I, fault. I, I, I'm a team player. I'm going to take the blame. So, yeah, it's my bad. Sorry, everybody. Uh, this is the Pro Chess League, Week 7, Battle Royale, here to have a good time. And it looks like one of these players has a rough connection because I just saw, um, I think it was Zhao Jun having a reconnect here. But with the black pieces, I would definitely consider playing Knight Takes D5. And yep. that gets rid of this bishop, of course, but it also opens up this bishop on G7. So eventually I could consider moves like Pawn to B4 because maybe I start with B4, honestly. And the point yeah. is that if you touch the C pawn as white, let's say you place pawn to C4, then your pawn of B2 is hanging at the end of many of these variations. And I don't think black would be too unhappy to gobble up that pawn or play pawn to B3, kind of creating a hook of its own by playing B3 and trying to get the rook involved in the game by capturing back with that rook. So counterplay yeah. is necessary for black in a position like this. You're a little bit tied down. Yep. And what I'm noticing here for black is that although white's king is in a pretty awkward position, he's not very well defended, it's too hard for him to figure out a plan to try and attack the king. So he's just going to focus on breaking open the queen side like you just showed 
to try to get his rook active. And that would also help open up the file for attacks against the king. Yep. And I really like this move knight e3 because now if you capture on d5, I'm mm -hmm. for sure capturing back with my knight. And look at the black king. It's starting to feel less and less safe with pieces surrounding it. So um, the knight on f f6 is very useful. It defends against rook to d7, which would yep. win the d6 bond. So I think Zhao Jun is going to keep that knight there for a while and try to just maneuver in some form, a useful form. But I think that black is a little tied down for the time being. It's uncomfortable. Right. Do you, do you think Zhao Jun should just go for some type of queenside pawn push here since his pieces are already pretty well placed or at least as optimal as they can be? Probably, but every pawn move has a drawback. If you go b4, mm -hmm. then my knight might go to c4, and then d6 is uh, Right, clear and target. I guess that they just play this, so knight c4 does look kind of scary here. Although I... Maybe I don't want to allow oh, you to take... Oh, c3 might open up the position exactly. too much. Exactly. Yeah. As I was say, maybe all of a sudden black can turn things around by getting this rook down the b-file, right? If we start trading pawns on c3, we'll open up that b-file so the rook can land on the b1 square. Anyway, so maybe bishop b3 is a good starting move for white, saying, okay, feel free to take on c3, but in, when you do take on c3, now my bishop blockades your rook so that after pawn c3, pawn c3, well, your rook is staring into a brick wall on b3. Yep. So, okay. Let us hop around. I see Tom Polgar playing against uh, Bonnie Lix. That is Yunshen Li. Bonnie, okay. And here with the white pieces is white, white's up a pawn. So Yunshen Li, rated 2060, one of the lowest rated players in this entire event. She's looking like her position is really good here. She's up a pawn. Look at that king on h8, Alexandra. Whenever I see a king tucked in the corner, I look if there's luft, right, if there's space for the king to run to, and then yeah. I think, man, maybe I can just put my rook on c1 and then try to checkmate along the back rank. Yeah, this position looks amazing for her. And also, I love her photo with the angry chicken that looks like it's slurping noodles, but it's so busy looking evil that it's not even paying attention to the food. <laughs> this is definitely one of my favorites so far. Yeah, yeah, no, that is actually really hilarious. And okay, the last two moves, a3 to protect b4, h6 yeah. to give the king a square. But now white can remove this queen to c2. Queen c2, yeah. yep. She knew we were both were going to say it, so she decided to play it before yeah. uh, she heard us. Because we complete each other's sentences. sentences. No, you oh. did this to me before. I mean... You knew I was going to do it wrong, so you should have switched over to say oh. sentences, even though, yeah, okay, never mind. Yeah, we, we tried, anyway. It's just, we've gone so far just to lose it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least Yunshan is not going to lose this position because it is looking amazing. I really like Rook D1 here, um, because yep. if I can trade that Rook from D4 and get my Queen to D1, it just seems a lot easier to continue pushing b6 or create more weaknesses. Yeah. That rook attacking the pawn from behind was a little annoying, and now he can't do that anymore. Oh, that's a great point. Exchanging the rooks also gets the queen behind that pawn, and so you can start trying to push it up the board. As When you have a pass pawn, you'd like to have it move. So Daniel Naradisky won his game. That was with yeah. the black pieces. I mean, we loved his position earlier, and yep. he just uh, went straight forward, brought his rook into the game, and oh, that's a problem for... Hikaru got a win. He beat Anton Smirnov. Hikaru. Who seemed to be holding the position closed when we last looked at it, but it was still better for White. Yeah, Hikaru kept the position closed and then maneuvered as he saw fit and yep. clamped down on the pawn on e6. So not good news for the kangaroos. And the rook e6, nice. A discovery. Here's a queen hitting the king. Here's a rook hitting everything else. That's a good way to win. We, we have um, Le Quang Liam playing against Ding Li Ren. Oh, that is quite a matchup. Um, although... Who's better okay, and why? So, yeah, who is better and why? Um, okay, well, so white is going E4 to try to maybe go D5 and get a pass mm -hmm. pawn. But black has a much clearer pass pawn, like two on one on the king side. So we see right. there's two versus one, whereas there's a three on two mass in the center but they're double pawns, and it's not easy to get right. double pawns rolling. The d5 is a clear option for white next move. Yeah, 
and it white's king is also more active here so that's another important factor to consider here which is also why he played a4 because he's stopping b5 yep um do you think white should try to trade off his knight here or that he should try and keep it should white trade off the knight um well if you go knight f6 check you're I would keep it because the good thing about a knight in an endgame like this is the knight can go from color to color, whereas obviously mm -hmm. the bishop is stuck on the dark squares, the limitations of a bishop. So right. now I would... I, okay, but this actually might be the right time to make this pawn break. You're undoubling white's pawns, but once we start trading off pawns, there's just not many left. So, you know, e takes f6, bishop f6, for example. If you play yep. d5, trying to create some sort of pass pawn, then I'll get rid of the queen side pawns, and once I take on d5, it's gonna. I'll eventually sacrifice my bishop for your lone remaining pawn, and that should be. Uh, a, well, that is a theoretical draw. Right? A king and knight right. can't checkmate by itself. Yep, especially with players of such equal stature. Yeah, so Ding Loren's waiting for d5 just so he can t play b5 check, yeah. and he doesn't mind Ooh. sacrificing a pawn. Knight b4. But also, the position between Zhao Jun and Dennis Boros is heating up, although now they might trade off pieces. Okay, well, this game is in. Uh, gonna be no, they're not going to trade. Sorry, Black doesn't want to trade. Okay, the game is interesting. Well, this game looks like it's going to be a draw, but so we'll come back to this Lequang Liam game if they don't draw in the next few moves. Whoa, yep. there's been a weird repetition of moves. Rook f8 to e8 and rook f7 to e7. So both rooks going back and forth. Yeah, and... but look at that queen and bishop pointing towards white's king. They have taken away all of his moves. If black could somehow teleport over and check the king on the second rank, that would be amazing. And but can he open it up? Yeah, well, this is interesting. So take on e7 and play queen f3. I mean, you just gave me the idea. There it is. <laughs> You say, well, can I just open up the king? Well, of course. Now, queen f2, queen g1 is going to be checkmate because the king would have to go to h1. Yep. And my king can always escape from g7 to h6. And here's a moment where having the bishop is so nice. The bishop limits the enemy queen. And, well, just looking very nice here for Zhao Zhu. And it's probably just winning at this point. Yep. And it looks like uh, Ding Li Ren and... Uh, Laquam just drew their game. Okay, so here, Dennis Boris on queen e4. I would not take that. Queen f2 check. I don't know if that was precise, but okay, it works. Queen f6 just to protect my deep on. Okay, yeah. don't, don't lose in time. Uh, I, I was about to ask you. He's about to lose on time. No, no, no. Oh my god, 0.3 seconds. Oh gosh. That would be so sad. And now he's losing all his pawns. What's he doing? He's not of any material anymore. He, he's going to lose now. He's, he's not going to lose. No, he's go I'm telling you he's going to lose this game. Oh, man. He just offered him a draw. He's afraid. Decline immediately. <laughs> Ro Robo has auto decline. Yeah, because what, I mean, just the last couple moves. You know, queen e4, I would have just went queen f1 instead of queen f2 check because that allowed my yeah. queen to spy on the d3 pawn back on move 35. Was that the position where he almost flags at? He almost lost on time trying to think that through. I think he just panicked and exchanged. Yeah. So. Yeah. But it. So normally when you we are playing rapid games online, um, in equal pawn end games, knight versus bishop, the knights are more tricky. They're harder to defense defend against, especially if your opponent has low time. Um, with a twenty six hundred player, he shouldn't fall for any traps. But hey, uh, Dennis Boros is going for it. Yes, he is. And five minute car one just won his game, so good for him. Nice. And yeah, no, but the good thing about having the knight is you can just go from color to color. It just, you can put the knight on either a dark square or a light square, and it can at more importantly, can attack either a light, light or a dark square. Now, the problem for white is that the black king mm -hmm. is so advanced. So Oh my gosh. There's a scent of food from the kitchen coming in. What kind wow. of food? It Wait. just smells hearty. But okay, back to this. You're trying to make me hungry? I mean, it's 11.53 p.m. here. You're right. That's not what I should be trying to do. Yeah, it's okay. I forgive you. So king e5 was necessary. If you played king d4, you get knight c2 checked and forked. So you have to make sure to watch out for forks you know, against a knight. But look at this position here. Knight c2. You always have to say, can I actually allow my opponent to take my bishop? The answer is yes, because then you take with a C pawn, and then black actually would be better in that end game. So leave that bishop on B4, and maybe mm -hmm. even play king F4, because the king can go from F4. I think black's better here. So, when, I mean, this was just a weird game where 
it went from one side being better to the yeah, other. Yeah, we didn't know who was winning. I don't think they knew what was going on either. So we have two, no, one game left now, and that's Criari yeah. versus Sahaj Grover. And yep, and it's good to hear, Dave Hogg, that you're learning from this. That's what we're we're trying to do. Well, I'm not really trying to help him learn, but maybe that's it. <laughs> but you do it naturally, so it's okay. Um, and, uh, well, yeah, White should win this because, yeah, he just resigned. If the Black Knight would try to defend the pawn here, White can either come King E5. and Yeah, White could come King E5 and just sacrifice his rook for the pawn because he is going to promote and Black's king is too far to stop it. Yep. But maybe you can explain how you would calculate this to see that Black's king is too far to stop it after knight g2. So knight g2. I mean, the problem is this king is cut off, right? So I would mm -hmm. say I can make many moves, but I'll start with king to e5. And the point is if you go king a7, that's your only legal move with the king, then mm -hmm. I can sacrifice my rook for the pawn so that we get into a pawn of endgame, which is winning. But maybe I yeah. can also play rook to b2 just to attack your knight and then win the pawn by force. Right. Oh, and Chad is pointing out that um, on move 64, after knight g2, king c7 is checkmating, actually, which is a cute tactic. On which move, sorry? Um, on move 65, oh, after nice. knight g2. That's even stronger, yeah. So you yep. wanted me to show one thing, I chose to show another, and chat was too smart for both of us. I was like, hey, checkmate yeah. is better than winning material. We were trying to be instructive here with something that you would see in a lot of games by trying to calculate if the king can catch a pawn. But, you know, tactics get in the way of things. Yep. And, <laughs> no, absolutely. Tactics, I don't know, there's some kind of quote or pun that should be said here, some of the tactics. But, oh, the people yeah, would... some quote, insert tactic quote. Don't have it. I don't know. Don't have it. Forgot but... to upload the file earlier. Yep, I forgot. Missing the... I'm, I'm sorry. I'm working on it. You know, I'm always a work in progress. That's the important thing. I realize that, so... Um, yeah, 404, tactic quote, not found. <laughs> I'm not going to get tired of these. Yeah. Um, also, shout out to Face Chess. Good to see you back in the chat again. And, of course, the mods, Crazy Coffee Man, Sam Copland. You guys are doing an awesome job. Yep. So, also, you can scroll over, is it my face, somebody's face? And you can follow, yeah, underneath me, on my name. Yep. You can follow GM Hikaru, that's Hikaru Nakamura, who whose games we've been following and uh, commentating on, he is streaming live while playing. So if you want to hear his thoughts and see his games unfold, definitely tune into his channel. And, well, not just when he's playing. You should always look at it. Yep. And you can also follow our channels, um, GM Hess and mine, Alexander Botas. I'm shouting out the channels we're talking about in the chat in case you're curious. But you could just click over one click follow and then hang out with us when we're not doing commentary and just doing our own chess thing on chat on twitch yep yep <laughs> -doo -doo. so now that we have three minutes of the game and this is a problem for me because you know me i can only talk chess right like yep i'm just all about that chess no treble because you're like all some... about that exactly. yeah hey you, you did yeah, all we, right we had that going on right there but let's let's talk a little bit about the scoreboard alexandra I'm going to need you to help me out here. So we see that the Archbishops and the Shangdu Pandas, they're in the lead right now. The Webster Windmills are a point behind. So of the individual scores, has anyone surprised you, or is it just sort of par for the course for you at this point? Well, Ahmed Ali I mean, having zero points. That's... Hikaru has been the top performing player in the Pro Chess League so far. So for him to have one and a half out of three is a pretty big shocker, I think, for anybody. Yep, I, um, I can with let's that. Let's see. Anton Smirnov has faced really tough competition. So uh, 0.5 out of 3 looks really bad, but he's had tough games, so that's not the biggest surprise here. Let's see. Who else has had something interesting? Um, I mean, Wesley So, 5 on a Carwana, they're doing their good work, right? That's They're doing the work. Daniel yep, Naraditsky. and Daniel Naroditsky ah. is having a good... Good week. Why are we on the same page nonstop right now? I don't know. I think it's synchronized, but it's good. Yeah. I mean, I don't like synchronized swimming, but synchronized commentary seems like a good place to be. Oh, I feel like we could do some synchronized commentary with some synchronized hand movements, but we don't have to. Um, okay. I mean, I have to figure that one out. We can work on it. So which do you want to start with? Like, 
Yeah, how, how should we do this? Uh, just put your right hand up okay. on two and then your left hand up. Ready? On two? Wait, but when do I put Wait. my left hand up? On three. I'm going to say one and then on two you go right hand up, on three you go left hand up. Okay. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Couldn't really see either of my arms, I don't think, but <laughs> I did it. I, I went for Okay. It. Um, I guess we're going to stick to just not unsynchronized chess commentary. Oh, always synchronized though. Yeah, I, the words are synchronized. The hand movements a little bit harder. But yeah. what about you? Did, were you surprised by any results? I am surprised that you're still talking to me. So that's the first thing I'd say. Um, but after that, let me think. I think I expected Adiban to have more than one point, and we did just see him lose at the white pieces of Naradiski. And that's one of the reasons that Mumbai is down at four and a half points. They're not really performing up to par. But we have seen... Unsurprisingly, Manu David Suthandram, whose games we haven't looked at, but whose game is on screen right now, he has two and a half points, which is, of course, is excellent. Yeah, and, and uh, he's underrated. And he's like playing crazy. against the evil bird noodle eating Yun Shan Li, so tough competition. Yep, definitely. And she's on the Shangdu Pandas, and she's twenty sixty. At least when this league. Uh, the season was started, so mm -hmm. she's also underrated because I believe her live rating is somewhere in the 2100s. Um, oh, we have Daniel Naroditsky and Hikaru. They play matches all... Whoa, Hikaru just played H6 again. No, he didn't. Yes, he no, did. I didn't see it. It didn't happen, right? If a tree falls in the forest and nobody hurts <laughs> Go, him. Go look. You might have a uh, deja vu looking uh, at that. Game. Stop the it. Deja vu of Robert getting angry. <laughs> stop it. I feel like we've lived through this. Okay, but he, so I'm trying to justify this. Let me think of the words. You keep talking, I'll think, okay? Yep. So <laughs> this is what happened before Hikaru ended up castling on the king side, which was crazy because you don't normally see that in this type of French system, especially since both of White's bishops are pointed towards the king side, and you have a pawn on g5 and h6. So I'm curious to see if he's going to change his strategy here. But I think Daniel Naroditsky might punish him for this. <sighs> yep, you said some that are excellent. We can move on now, right? We can go to a different <laughs> game. Has, has it started? I mean, we can check out another game and come oh, back to this. I am full of energy. I'm alive and well, but I, I just don't like what Car is doing. Like it's, it's. I mean, you have good reason to not like what he's doing. I, I, I think I'm. I don't know what I'm enjoying more, the fact that he's trolling or your reaction to it, but they're both high up there. He's going to win this game, by the way. He, you just know. Yeah, because, okay, I, you know, he is the better player between him and Naroditsky. Naroditsky's already burned a bunch of clock, which means he doesn't feel super-duper confident. Burned a bunch of clock. I like it. Yeah, I mean, he's down a minute on the, on the clock, right? So yep. Black has a very easy sort of general plan in the sense of go after the E5 pawn. And with the white pieces, you have to think, well, can I actually give that pawn up or do I need to defend it at all costs? And, right. Well, if you want to defend it at all, all costs, too bad, because look at that pawn. How do you protect it? You don't. Yeah, crickets was the correct answer, so you, <laughs> you certainly pass. Because look at this, three minor pieces attacking this one pawn, and you only have one minor piece protecting, and say you go queen e2, you get your third piece there, but it's not the right order of pieces, so it's not going to be a good thing for white. So knight b3, typical idea to open the position. So if you take on e5 and you take yep. on the knight, then I can go f4 and start getting my bishop into the game. And um, white is looking for the counterplay to kind of make this position work. You know you might lose this pawn at any moment. So what you are hoping for is that your quick activity will be sufficient compensation for the pawn. Yep, and before we go any further, I just wanted to quickly thank Faisha because he gifted five subs to the Chess.com Twitch channel, helping support more events like this. So we really appreciate it. Thank you, Faisha, for that. Hopefully all 4,800 of you guys are enjoying the chess. Come hang out in the chat. Say hi to everybody. And come see GMs troll and beat each other. Yep, that's a good way to sum up this league. GMs trolling and beating each other. Well, I looked at Chef's house. That's Dingley Ren's oh, position. Oh, interesting question before you go. 
just because somebody put this comment on the chess.com game between Hikaru and Daniel Naradisky, okay. he's upset that Hikaru is playing like this since it's a team event. Do you think he has right to be upset? Is it unfair that Hikaru is playing moves like H6 in a team event? Who is upset? Uh, just some someone who is watching. Oh, I thought you were But saying... as somebody on Hikaru's team, would you be upset to see him play H6? No, if I'm Hikaru, I'm upset that my teammates are losing. So, like, I'm going to play how I want. His team has four and a half points, right? They're... Oh! <laughs> They're in last place. So, you know, he's got one and a half out of three, which, of course, is not, you know, not ideal. But he drew against Laquang Liam, and he lost to Ding Li Ren. Even if he played a normal opening, he still may very well lose to Ding. Right? Ding is t- the number three rated player in the world. So. Right. Um, yeah, no, I think his teammates have no right to be upset with Hikaru because he's leading the way. That was, I think, my favorite Hess line of the commentary session so far. So, all right, now we can move on to the next game you were saying. Which game was I talking about again? Oh, Ahmed Adli versus Dingley Ren? Yep. Yeah, so I saw some ugly pawns, and I was like, okay, I know what opening this came from, but now there's black is even on mm-hmm. terms of material, but I look at this bishop on g2, and I don't know how that's ever going to have a future because you need to play f4 and then e5, in which yep. case you shut down your other bishop. And that's the sort of the funny part of having these two bishops. They're great in a sense, or they can control lots of space. But in order to free up one, you have to then kind of constrict the other, which is not a good solution. Uh, right. So maybe he should hold off constricting his bishop for now, especially since f4 and e5 also weakens his king side a little bit mm-hmm. even if it might not look like that from first glance white is going for the main weakness in this position which is the c6 pawn what side would you pick here oh i definitely like white's position so i was just going to point out that the bishops need some space to breathe but also yep. look at that knight on d3 that might be a pony that's gone too far as <laughs> how are you going to get that out of there like Okay, now you might never get that out of there. So Yeah, he just took away his knight's return stable. Um, and Dingleren is also having Wi-Fi issues. He's down on time. This is a little bit tricky. He's just really having position issues. I don't, you know, his Wi-Fi... He's having all types of issues. Yeah. I mean, F4, okay, I guess F4 now was all right, but still don't love that move. I mean, a big issue for, for white is you can't play rook to D1 because knight F2 check is a nice sacrifice. As this yeah. rook on d1 is staring down at the rook, this knight gives a check, forking that rook, and if you take with the, the queen on f2, you end up losing your rook on d1, and then also you'll lose your rook on c4 after that. So that would be right. a tragic situation. So f4, yep. rook b8, that looks normal to me. And it's a, a little bit annoying because the white rook on f1 doesn't actually have a great square to go to. He can't go to b1, c1, d1, e1, so he's stuck there. An interesting idea for white would be to play something like... No, h3 and king h2 is also weakening, but I was trying to find a way for him to help his bishop go to d1. So can you go bishop f3 to e2? Bishop f3 to e2 is nicer because... Oh, whoa! just... I don't even know what I was going to say. He pushed h4, okay. which is kind of a shocker. But knight b2 cannot be a good move. Like, I would, don't take it. Just put your rook back to c3. And, like, what's your knight doing there? I'm threatening rook to b3 yep. now. And rook b3 will win this knight. That, that was strange. I guess knight a4 is now the move that you have to play. You've forced yourself into the situation. So knight a4 as the retreat. Because knight d3 runs probably into... Do I have rook? No. I oh, made knight d3 back as possible. I lied. I didn't mean to lie, but I did. He went well, he went with your first choice anyway. He played knight a4. Rook b3 looks good here regardless, even if the knight isn't on b2 anymore. Um, because if, if black ever takes back, white gets to undouble his pawns. Yep. Also, another move that comes to mind after rook b3 is maybe white can go f5 at some point, just trying to break open the position. You have bishops, right? Bishops love yeah. open space, open diagonal. Oh, there's f5. That's exactly. He, he pre-moved it. Yeah, he, he took no time on that yeah, move. Six seconds to play f5. And he, wow. he says, I don't want to play e5 to ruin this bishop. So I'm going to play f5 so that if it's captured on f5, now both of my bishops are controlling the game's longest diagonals. And Ahmed Adli, we were just talking about how he had no points. Uh, at the moment, it, 
he's well on his way to scoring a victory, but we did see Adiban Baskaran not win that first game despite having an amazing position. Okay. Yep, that's true. Um, Wait, so isn't the Rook not hanging on B8 it... for free? Rook takes B8, to... oh no, there's a knight on A6. I can't see anything. There, There is a knight, oh, but... but... Yeah, no, this is pretty bad. You're taking on E6 next? Yeah, E6. Wow. He has to move his knight. I really didn't see that the knight protected the rook. Well, Wesley Slow missed Maiden 1 and then winning a queen, so... It sounded like you just called him Wesley Slow. So, well, he was slow to think of the good move, so well, it applies. All right, nice save there. I approve. <laughs> I definitely approve of that. But this is a very... Oh, re resignation occurred. For those of you wondering why Ding Loren just resigned so quickly, it's this knight on b is under attack, as is this pawn on e6. And once this pawn on e6 is lost, let's say after knight a6, takes, mm -hmm. takes, queen takes, look at this bishop on G, uh, a1 aiming for g7. So after a move like, I don't know, king to h7, let's say, it's your king just going to get ripped open very quickly. So h5 is a move to sacrifice a pawn just to get the king open. Rook f8 going for a queen g8 check and the checkmate on h8. It's just the black king is has nowhere to run to. Yep. I'm just looking at other games while you explain that one on the board. Tell me where to go. I'm all ears. Uh, maybe we should look at the game between Tigra and Petrosian and V-Bot or Vinay bot Okay. Vinay, how are you doing, buddy? And the the immediate question is, does White have a real attack here? I'm leaning towards yes, since he hasn't given up any material to get his pawns that far out. And he has all of the peace support he needs. His bishop's pointing towards the king. The knight's on f3. I'm just not sure what his plan should be here what to follow up with a strong attack. Be? That's a great question, because if you ever play f6 for white, then g6 by black, and it's going to be hard to actually get into the position. You would somehow right. need your knight to like reroute to h6 with check. Yeah. So even though your pawns are pushed so far and near the black king, it actually doesn't make sense to push either of them yet. Well, he pushed the h pawn. That's actually really smart. That one makes sense. That one makes sense. We were uncertain how the f and g pawns made progress so he just went and pushed the h and said okay hey. i'm gonna keep my options open retain some flexibility i can go h5 i can also play bishop to h3 if i think that diagonal is better for my bishop because the bishop on g2 is not doing anything on that square so bishop h3 at some point will be a decent move so i would just play h5 here and say keep on there the pushed he pre-moved. What is this pre-moving? I just I, I find it a little bit ridiculous to pre-move when you have over I, when you have eight minutes on the clock. When you have over three minutes, why are you pre-moving? Yeah, I mean he didn't. He spent thirteen seconds on h5, and then Vinay spent one second on queen b5. Two minutes and twenty-two seconds left, facing an attack. I would probably be in a hurry as well. No, that's fair. Just me. Uh, I w I was actually reading uh, Daygrode's comment. Or he's talking about the SF mechanics trying to finish in front of Seattle. And that's actually nice to hear because there are some teams that are not going to be able to make it in the final four, but they're still playing their best and they found ways to get new goals, which is what you should always do and motivate yourself regardless of how the tournament is going, yeah, as yeah. Robo Hess knows. That's very true. And, yeah. um, well, it's 12, 13 a.m. What's going on? It's past midnight. Yeah. Um, are you, you're still good. Do you need a nap? You know, if you want to power nap for five minutes, I'll hold down the fort. No worries. Yeah? You'll do that for me? You're such a yeah. good team player here. Right. So I mean, it'd be very lonely, so don't do it. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll continue talking until I lose my voice. Sounds good. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, do you think we should? Oh, we haven't gone back to the Daniel Hikaru game yet. Right, the one that started with h6. Here we are. And Hikaru is better. <laughs> yep. So the reason why I feel so confident saying that Hikaru is better is that if we look at the pawn structure, it's five on five, but black has a central mass that's also mobile. And white's right. kingside mass, like this h pawn, it's not really a mass, it's just <laughs> one pawn. The two twins. <laughs> yeah, the twins over here. But this yeah. h pawn is hard to push because the bishop on g3 needs some defense. And if that bishop ever moves from g3, then as black, I eye the g2 square. And I think maybe I can push my d pawn and sacrifice it if it means I'm getting this pawn on um, g2. So 
Yeah, I, I like what you said about Black having a strong center. My question to you would be, how should, not Hikaru, but how would somebody who's learning to play chess think of a strategy here? Because it's not enough to just push the center pawns with e5 and d4. You have to have some piece coordination. Right. No, you're, you're absolutely right. You just don't push the pawns and say, hope this works out. You try to figure out, you know, do I push this e6 pawn to e5 and to e4 or leave it on e5 because from e5 it restricts this bishop on g3 as well. And this knight on a3 is particularly annoying because where is my bishop going to go? If I go to d3, then e5 actually threatens e4, kicking this bishop away from b3. Right. So there's another tempo to be gained. And that's always an yep. important thing to keep in mind. So bishop d1, ultra passivity from Daniel Naroditsky, and knight b5 yeah. is, of course, a reasonable response, and there's e5. If you ever push c4 as white to get rid of what looks like a weak pawn, this knight is hopping straight for the d4 square, and I can promise you Naroditsky will not be happy if that knight lands there. I don't think that he's going to continue with c4 for that reason here, but if he doesn't put... Okay, so he played bishop f3. Uh, now black has quite a few choices. I actually liked king e6, just bringing the king closer as you want to do in any end game. Yep, I agree with but you. But this must also make sense since Hikaru played it. I just don't want to think like that. I don't want to assume that something is right just because a, a top player you, made it, you know? You should never just enjoy, um, not enjoy, sorry, uh, agree with someone just because they're good. And in fact, this, like, exactly. this thing called talk stoop, and I saw it once with Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was like, hey, what do you go by? He goes by Neil. He's like, I go by Neil, call me Neil. And it's like, well, aren't you like this brainiac? He's like, well, you should um, agree with me because the things I say make sense to you, not because I have a PhD in astrophysics. So, you know, I'm going to agree with somebody when they got a PhD in astrophysics because I don't know anything about astrophysics. But I said, that was think, a great quote. That was a great quote. Yeah, I butchered it a little bit, but you get the point. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, how do you think the position has transitioned since when we first looked at it? Are, he, are Hikaru's winning chances better or worse here? Uh, probably worse. I don't like, like you said earlier, that his d4 move felt a little bit too soon. And yep. I thought king e6 was better back then just to delay that progress. Instead, he rushed it a bit. And now look at Nerditsky, the timely b4. And if you take on b4, I can just take back with my rook. And now your knight is feeling loose on the d4 square. I can put my rook on a4 to attack a7. And it seems like white is getting plenty of action in this position. And it just looks quite solid yeah i'd be surprised if hikaru ends up winning this game which is a bold thing to say finally a prediction that doesn't match up with the ratings yeah cool. oh uh wesley so just drew his game against um diptai and gosh diptai and gosh yeah why did they agree to a draw here well the beef pretty early on also which is surprising yeah i guess wesley was worried about his b pawn and the fact is, like, if you go b3, maybe rook c1, and they're just going to start trading rooks off the board. But mm -hmm. I would have played on if I was Wesley. You're the better player. It doesn't seem like yeah. there's a tremendous amount of risk here, but I can see a future potentially where you lose your b pawn, and then you're like, okay, well, now I'm going to have to defend a pawn down with an outside pass pawn, and he instead just agreed for a draw. But I don't know. Got it. I wouldn't have well. done so. And what about Fabiano's game against Ariban? We haven't looked there yet. Um, I really like Fabiano's rooks in this position. They were the first thing that stood up and now stood out, and now the pawn on d4. Black has two knights blocking the d file, so he cannot protect it as easily as you'd think, especially since the knight can't go to f5 because the bishop takes f5, and it can't go to b5 either. Yep. Oh, this is not looking great. Bishop is dominated by the enemy knights. The knight on d6 is great. The knight on f6 can go to d5 and then to c3. Um, well, rook takes c7 and runs right into a whammy of knight d5 because f7. Oh, okay. So you like you think Ariban's position is better here? Yeah. Got it. When I first looked at it, it seemed like White's rooks were so active and that it would be hard for him to develop that I was leaning towards Fabiano. But I see the plan you're pointing out here. Yeah, I just think that some of the pawns are also weak, the b3 pawn in particular. So now if you take on c4 with the pawn, you lose a4. If you mm -hmm. take on c4 with a rook, I'll put my knight on d5, probably. And mm -hmm. no, maybe you're right, though. I mean, there's definitely some clear play for, for white here that's 
Okay, I did not like that. Oh, Chess Bay, good to see you. Hi, Alexandra and Robert, just over here to say hi. We appreciate it, Chess Bay. We know you're busy holding down the fort in Hikaru's stream, so it's good. Hey, Chess Bay. We appreciate you stopping by. What, what is going on in this game? So there's a knight sacrifice coming. If you're a rookie four trying to win my knight on d4, then I'm going to go knight of five check. So rookie four, knight of five check. You take me. I queen g5 check you, Pokemon. Um, King you take me, I check you. Yeah, something like that. And down goes f6 at the end of this. So it looks like... Whoa, so Fabiano looked like he just found some tactical way to get out of the worst position here. We're not sure if it works yet, but queen g5, knight h6 looks very scary here. Yeah, queen... Now, why didn't he... So he didn't take it, but now queen g5 still looks problematic for black. And white is even a material... Mm -hmm. And to me, it just looks a little scary to have the black side of this position. Queen g5 just taking over some of these loose, dark squares and attacking this knight on f6. So queen g5, I guess you go rook b6 is the only way to protect this knight through the other rook. And then I can even just go rook c5 back and say, I'm going to take your a5 pawn and play it slowly, play it comfortably. So Okay. Queen... Well, they, they listened to none of my suggestions here. Well, they should um... I, I mean, it's it's looking very good for for Fabiano here because he's gonna grab isn't, either some pawns or isn't hmm. Queen G five check win? No, it doesn't win. Ah, uh, yeah, because there there should be a discovery check. No, but there's no discovery check. Yeah. So if you went to uh, F eight here, then Rook takes F seven check, hits this Queen on here. Oh, they don't have much time, so let's get to the live position. I can show all the discoveries later. Mm -hmm. So queen f5, now queen, rook takes f7, followed by queen h7 mate is going to be a problem. So just one rook takes f7 lands on the board. Or, yeah, rook takes f7 just leads to mate. Rook a1, king h2. There, I was just going to say there's no perpetual because after queen d6, you can block with g3. It's a very important move here. Queen e5 check, forces king g8, and then queen e8 is yep. check and mate. Nice save, or I don't know. I don't know if save is the right word, but he did come from a position that we thought was slightly worse. Yeah, he emerged from the complications and won the game because he is the one, the only, the Fabiano. But yeah. you said that with an accent, though. Yeah, you know? I know. I just try to get a little bit, a little bit of uh, a hint of yeah of an accent in there. But yeah, it no, just you know when we tuned in here and then. When Arivan allowed knight f5 check and didn't capture the knight, he, I think he got himself into some trouble here because after what happened in the game, he then started trading rooks. He, king safety is paramount, and yeah. as Fabiano traded on c4 and played queen g5 and simply took this pawn f5, there are too many threats here with rook takes f7 threatening the mate on h7, threatening rook to f8, threatening queen e5 check is in the game. Uh, with the rook on the seventh rank, you can also have back rank checkmates. It's just pure domination of Caruana's pieces over Arivan's. So it was a nice victory. Yeah, so St. Louis is going to continue with the lead in the Battle Royale so far. And they've been playing very well. They definitely deserve it. I think we should hop on over to uh, Tigran and Vinay's game again. Whoa. Seems to be pretty exciting. Time pressure on both sides. Um, Tigran does have that pass beep on, and he's trying to trade off queens since he's up material here. And if you trade queens, then white's just going to win easily because that b pawn is going to roam free. Now, I want so to play knight of queens. I want to play knight of seven check. So queen a two is the first move that comes to mind. But I, then a knight g four check happens, and I might lose my bishop on e three. So this is knight g four check is an annoying threat. Right. So bishop e two. Uh, knight g four check. Yeah. yeah. So maybe he can move his king first to get rid of that check, and then play queen a two. Yeah. Or he, bishop e set. Bishop e two makes more sense. Yeah. Let's develop that. Yep. So that now piece. queen takes d6. There it is. Aw, he blundered. Well, he was in such a bad position. It was lost already. It makes sense. Yeah. And he just tried to find a move. Then I will resign here. Okay, or not. He should resign. It's not too early, I promise. <laughs> just knight c4, winning the e5 pawn. And you're down a piece and a pawn. b5, b6, b7. Looking good. Okay. Um... I think Anton Smirnov, oh, he's going to lose. He's down three pawns. He's down three pawns? He's down three pawns in a rook end game. Um, Laquang Liam has 17 seconds, but he should be able to hold this. It's a bit of an interesting end game here. Is, is there something that's being missed? Is there a perpetual? Oh, boy. No. This is a rook pawn end game. 
This is actually no, no. Rook F3 check. He's in check forever. Wait, 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 wait. No, but I... the king can get closer to the rook. Yeah, it's, it's winning. So king d2. Yeah. A4 now. And then you put the other pawn in h3. So you can protect both of your pawns, essentially. Also, you don't even need your h pawn anymore. If you just push your a pawn down and then bring your king over, that should also be uh, sufficient. Why is I it? love this comment. Robert Hess so knowledgeable. It blows my mind that there are better chess players that exist. Me too, for fly. Me too. I mean, sometimes I just pretend to be knowledgeable, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like. I mean, the real reason that... Hess isn't playing in the pro chess league, and this is the first time I'll say it and the last, so keep it a secret, is that it would be considered engine assistance. So I don't think that's it. I'm pretty sure it's because I commentate and they're like, there's a conflict of interest here, so you cannot play and commentate. And I'm like, well, I'm really just interested in helping people learn chess. So if I play and they see my mistakes, that feels like we can learn from that too. But alas, Wait, wait, rook up two check. He blundered his rook. <gasps> oh, my. oh my god! Wait, wait, wait. Oh, he takes all the pawns. He takes all the pawns. Oh, ah. I love it. I was just like making jokes, and he made a joke out of his position and blundered his rook. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. So okay, we're in this position here with rook f three. He went rook a two, which of course is a terrible move. But he was a bit flustered, and the reason why is this rook checks from the side, and this black king has some real trouble. And like if you see here with rook f2 check coming, so if he goes king to c2, like if he runs his king this way, then this rook comes f2 check again. And okay, you should eventually touch this rook with your king. So rook f3, king to e4. And then you can finally push your pawn because the, what happens if you continue to take a side defense after a2, I can throw my rook away with rook h1 check and you can't stop me from promoting then. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind. Hey. Yep. The ambulance are coming. No, they are coming for, for oh, that blunder. Wait, there's That's... another game going. Oh, yeah, let, let's go quick. Um, Sorry. NM Josh Bloomer, Rakesh. Well, White barely has any moves, so, but it's losing, it looks like. Just King E1. There's the ambulance. Uh, I hear it, I hear it. Um, Should I get the emote? Oh, Face Chest using my emote before I could do it. Face Chest is too fast. Face Chest got it going on. All right, well, Josh is gonna win this and he just won josh bloomer yeah beating rakesh kulkarni but so which game was his at? profile picture reminds me of that photo you took to test your uh webcam once and then it's the only photo you had on your computer <laughs> you felt like you should upload one in pcl you're you're really good at analyzing like what people's photos are like i i'm approved 100 percent. yeah thanks um, okay so should i go back um, to that teaching moment Yes, go back to the teaching moment. All Sorry. Right. In a moment like this, some robos teach some chess. All right, is that how that goes, that song? That was, that was good. That was good. Um, okay, so where was I? I was over here. So, yeah, if you put your rook on F2, once A2 happens, you can't stop me from giving you a check on H1, or if your king goes to G2, I'll give you a check on G1, whatever, and then I get a queen because you need your rook behind the pawn once it gets to the seventh, your seventh rank, to the second rank in this case. So instead of playing rook to f2, you would put your rook on a square like b3, so that if a2 happens, I play rook a3, and now we're actually in a theoretical draw. And the reason why this is a draw is this king... Oh yeah, this is such a nice position. Yeah, you can actually put more black pawns. So if I gave black like two more h pawns, you're still not going to win. And it's the shame of rook pawns in a rook endgame, right? This is rook pawn because it's on these squares. But... The rook on a3 holds because the only way you can move this rook away from a1 is if this pawn is protected on a2. Otherwise, you lose it. So if you go rook b1, I simply take your pawn, and you're left mm -hmm. with two other rook pawns that aren't doing anything. Right. If and you... what happens if the king gets too close to the rook? Yeah, so you try to bring your king over. I'll put my rook... Let's say I move my king over. You do this. I do this. And now it's important to note that... Let's say this king was already on b4. I'm putting your king on f2 is the first way to lose the game because now yeah. I can give up my pawn if it means I can give you a check from exactly what happened in the game, honestly, very similar, and I put my rook to h1 because now I'm threatening to get a queen, and if you take my pawn, then I have rook h2 check. So Whoa. I'm protecting my pawn essentially by tactical means, not direct means. So um, if I bring my king to b3, as soon as my king touches my passed pawn, you give me a check 
from behind the king and you keep checking my king away, right? You can check for all these files and let's say the king, you know, we can check the king away after a bit. We can swing our rook right back behind his pawn until you can't make any progress. So that this is what- This was Endgame Time with Robert Hess. I hope that if you guys ever get into a position like this, you will now know how to hold it or what your plans should be. I hope so. I mean, it's, it's Vardis appreciated it. Good to see you, Vardis. Great to see Vardis. Vardis is always here. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't take viewers for granted. Sometimes we think they're always there and then they don't show up. That's why you always got to give Vardis a shout out, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, so maybe we should take a look at the standings. Okay. Let's check out the individual, how people are doing. And here we go. So you see that Dingley ran two points out of four games. He just lost to Ahmed Adli. So yeah, Delhi same as Hikaru Nakamura, our 2700s are not having their best day. Yeah, because Nakamura held to a draw by Naroditsky there. And yeah. if you look at the scoreboard, honestly, there's a pretty close bunch from second to seventh place there. I know that the Sluggers are now two games in the Pandas, but that's not an insurmountable lead by any measure. So uh, the Sluggers, let's say they beat one of the teams directly in front of them, they're playing catch-up. And, okay, the, the Archbishop seem to be running away with it. It helps when you're 1,800 on board. Actually, so he's 1,800 fide, it looks like, but his U.S. chess rating is over 2,200 because he's national master. So right. it's, it's misleading. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, it's just so hard to get the, the ratings right. But he, Fabiano's doing incredibly. Ray Robson is doing incredibly. Mm-hmm. And the games have started. I'm just trying to... Any predictions for the Hikaru Fabiano game? Oh, that's right now? Yeah. My prediction is I'm going to stay on that game and not going to change it at all. How's that sound? <laughs> You're not going to change it at all? Yeah, oh, yeah. So everybody who's watching here, we're only watching Why is game. Hikaru not playing? I just go went to his stream and he's talking and his time is running. So either he's not looking at the game window or he is disrespecting his opponent because he's been playing h6. Now he's just going to let himself go down to like two minutes and try to win. I'm trying to hear what he's saying. He's just talking about what they need to do and Chad is yelling at him to play. Oh, so he's trying to say like, my team needs to do better. Yeah, and... He's like, we need to like beat Delhi and we're, we're doing pretty well. So, but he's just <laughs> not moving. All right. He's thanking people for subscribing. All right. So we're going to go to a different game. Oh, he moved. As soon as, oh, look at that. He's listening. As soon as I said... Oh, it's my move. Sorry. No, he didn't know. He didn't know. <laughs> oh, okay. NYC Sorry, Micah asked, can anyone explain how the points work in Battle Royale? Okay, so all teams, so right now we're watching the Seattle Sluggers play against the St. Louis Archbishop. And it, this is board one for Seattle, Hikaru Nakamura. Board one for the Archbishop's five and a Karwana. Board two plays board two, three versus three, four versus four. You get one point for a win, half a point for a draw, no points for a loss, so just like typical chess, and you just add up all your team's points. And yeah. so we see that this is the board one matchup. Wesley So is board two for the Archbishops, playing board two for the Sluggers, Tigran Petrosian, not the former world champion who is deceased, but this is Tigran Petrosian, part of the Armenian chess boom that was led by the one and only Tigran Petrosian, uh, the former world champion. So Wesley So with the white pieces, looking great here. Humongous center. Mm -hmm. We love to see this kind of central pawn structure, but with the black pieces, you're not actually that concerned because it's not clear how to uh, continue improving your position as white, and you do have some good control over the light squares. You've given up the dark squares, right? This massive pawn chain on b2 to e5, but light square, light squares, you know, you have control over many of these light squares in return, and that's just mm -hmm. what happens when you start pushing pawns. Yep. And that's pretty common of these types of openings where white is able to get the center very early and black instead looks like he has a lot less space, but his pieces are on very strong squares, especially with the bishops on B7 and G7. You see that in a lot of positions like these. Yep. Um, the knight on H6. So normally we say a knight on the rim is dim. Yeah. Um, and... A lot of times when you see a knight on h6 or a knight on a6, it's trying to go to the f5 square. That doesn't look ideal since he has g4, yeah, which is another thing he's stopping. He's not allowing g4 right away. But 
uh, Robert, would you say the knight on h6 is placed well or placed poorly? Well, I don't think the knight is dim. I think you're, people are just needlessly insulting a knight on the side <laughs> of the board. And on a serious note, I think people actually get scared, like especially for players who are just you know, learning and just starting to improve. There's literally an ambulance sitting outside my apartment, like to outside my window over there. Oh my gosh, we have to go to Hikaru's game. Okay, let's go to Hikaru's Forget game. everything I said, you gotta go there. Oh, this is all theory. So not to burst anyone's bubble, but this is what, what's his name? Magnus Carlsen could have gotten this against Car uh, Fabiano in the World Championship. So the point is by knight mm -hmm. d5, your queen needs to stay protecting the knight and stay protecting the pawn c7. It cannot do both at the same time. So that's why knight d4 comes in, attacking mm -hmm. the enemy queen in return. So then knight takes queen, knight takes, and we're at a very... Well, this was some pretty lit theory. I mean, by pretty lit, you mean extremely tame and unentertaining for our nearly 5,000 viewers, then I completely agree with your definition of lit. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> You're gone? Did I just kick you off the, the stream by accident? Oh, my gosh. My bad. I mean, you know, I'm just... I, I respect you over here. I'm just, just saying. Oh, that's okay. It made me laugh. Let's go back to the other game. Let's talk about the, the knights. All right, let's talk. Let's get away from this game because look at this. It's got we're a symmetrical pawn structure. Queens are off the board. They're probably just going to trade pieces and move like bishop to g4. Okay, well, bishop d7. He's playing it safe. He'll trade rooks on e1, play rook d8, and then it's going to be a draw once all the pieces are traded off. Yeah, was I, did I go a little too hard there? No, I thought it was pretty entertaining. I, I feel bad now, a little bit. Like, just a teeny, teeny bit. Ah, we've broken into the emotion realm. Yeah. But okay, let's let's oh. check out another game. Um, let's see who else is playing this game that has something actually interesting going on. There's something happening here. Boy, what about Steven exactly Zirk and clear. Dennis Boros? So um, Blue Wizard and Z Kid. Z Kid, not A Kid, not B Kid, but Z Kid. Z Kid. It's yes. His name... This guy was last in line for everything during elementary school. Yeah, but he's first in line to the E4 square right now. D takes E4 looks real good because that queen on C8 is coming right to G4. I don't know what Dennis Boros did in this game, and you know, I, he's a good player, but he's not playing a good game. Let's put it that way. Because look at the. First, he's even, no, black's up a pawn right now, and he can just play queen to d8, and if you don't do anything, my queen's coming to d4 or to d3. Knight d3 check at some point in the near future is going to, oh, gosh. Like, queen d8, just, how are you stopping my knight from coming to d3 with check? You're not. <laughs> you're, just, you're just not stopping the knight from coming to d3. Um, he can try to play rook d1, and then at least... He has some control over the open file, and he'll have to move his king when he's in check. Um, I guess the only interesting potential thing to note here is that Black's king is also in the center of the board, and he doesn't have that many pieces developed yet. But once he gets that, white should be toast. Yeah. Also, it's or worth... Or maybe he'll... Yeah? The opening was the Hungarian opening, and Dennis Boris is... Hungarian, so you know, it just was a fitting opening name considering the player. But Z Kid brought his A game to this one, and already on move 15, it looks like Black has not moved any of the pieces except for the Knight and Bishop, but it's completely winning. And the reason why Knight d3 check threatens to scoop up this Bishop by putting the King in check. Black is currently up one pawn. If you go Rook to d1, saying, Okay, I'm gonna attack your Queen, I can always just throw this Knight d3 check in anyway and then figure out what mm -hmm. to do with my pawn on e4 and open up a line of discovery on this queen on c2. So, yeah, this is yep. this, this is real bad. And I, I think it's going to play out similar to what you said. Um, yeah, GM shouldn't play like this. Just just throwing that out there. But let, let's look back at Wesley and uh, Petrosian. Okay. So you they are playing a little, a little bit more GM style. Whoa, how did Wesley get a worse position all of a sudden? It looks so nice for him a couple moves ago. Right. And I would play g5 as black. I would hate my bishop afterwards, but I don't want to give white an attack by taking on g6. So uh, but hold on, let's go back just to see how we got here. So we were around this mm -hmm. position. Black got into timely c5. We saw a trade and another trade, and then, okay, the light squares. Ooh, f5. Just saying white wants to play f5 and start an attack. So black played f5 himself. 
Mm -hmm. And once f5 eventually did happen, oh, g5 was played, and look at this. Once this bishop, so if I'm black, I want to play c4, rook e8, bishop to c5, or don't touch my c-pawn because it keeps the knight out of d4, and once that knight gets to d4, it wants to go to e6. So I'll just continue making progress here with a move like, I don't know, just rook e8, or knight d5. Knight d5 looks pretty good. Yeah. So even though Black's bishop is on g7 and it looks a little bit awkward right now, he has a pretty clear plan to develop. Yeah. Yeah. So if rooks are traded off, who do you think is better here? That definitely helps white if all the rooks are traded because this knight on g3 can s sit on h5. And from h5, mm -hmm. it will always hit this bishop on g7, but also the pawn f6. And Black will be starting to feel a little bit tied down. But if you play with like knight to d5 mm -hmm. here, saying, okay, at least I'm improving my position, Just there's knight d5. So that yep. way, if you take on e3, I can take back with either rook or knight. But let's say I take it with my rook, you play rook e1, then I can even go for a move like queen to e8 and try to say, hey, I think the worst is behind me. And my knight may find its way to, to the f4 square, which uh, also is promising. Right. So all this um, has happened. Yeah, so this has happened. Rook d1. Just retreat your rook. Don't blunder rook takes d5, which is a threat here, removing the guard of the rook on e3. So I would just play rook to e7 or e8. I'm not sure which one. Mm -hmm. but one of those, probably rook e8. I don't want my back rank to be in any trouble. But uh, play rook e8, then put your knight in f4, and black, I think, is uh, doing all right here. And there's rook e8. Okay, so, so he came back to e8. Um, what if white goes knight h5 right away? That was the move you pointed out earlier as being scary if the rooks got traded. But what if white goes for it anyways? Yeah, maybe black can play knight e3. And if you try to pin my knight with rook e1, I can just pin myself some more with queen e4. And just try to claim <laughs> pin like... Pin yourself some more. So you're saying play queen e3 here? Well, so like I'm putting... Yeah, if they're knight e3, rook e1, and play queen e4 and just try to like, you know, mm -hmm. try to say like I'm restricting your pieces as well. I mean, I don't love it. Uh, but I don't see a clear way for white to take advantage. I mean, it could just be, maybe it's just bad, honestly, because knight takes g5 and play f6, and yep, this is terrible. Okay, new line of analysis. So bishop f8 played instead of rook e1 and bishop f8. Okay. So white can continue with knight h5 here? Yeah, I like your idea of knight h5. Just, mm -hmm. just park that knight there and say to black, how are you going to deal with this forever uh, knowing threat of knight to, uh, pawn f6 being under attack? Right. Um, and then if he trades rooks here, which he probably doesn't want to do, the queen is going to get onto e1 and be able to come in for the attack. Right. Yeah, you're fighting over the open file. Yeah. Um, I think this is, is I like pr prefer white's position here. I agree. Um, so. Also, can we go over this game between Ahmed Adli and Adivan? Because we certainly can. Can you tell me where Adivan's queen's going? Let me catch up to the game. It's um, a dash Adli and Fireheart ninety two. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of drawing in the meantime because I'm showing okay. you all the squares. That, so, white. Oh just my resigned. gosh, his queen is trapped. That's so sad. Did he blunder it? So that's what I was trying to point out by drawing many different uh, red squares on the board, but this queen had no Ooh. safe squares to go to, and that is what you call a trapped queen. Yep, but even after rook d8, he just had nothing to do because his knight was also hanging. So he couldn't save his knight and his queen. He was going to lose regardless. Yeah, so it looks like just his p he, w he actually brought his knight to c5. He was down a pawn, went knight to c5, but that didn't help at all because rook d8, like you said, and the bishop g4, hits and wins the queen. So a nice win for Adli, who's come back after an 0-3 start. He has beaten Dingli Ren and now yeah. uh, Adiban Baskrion, So, And Daniel looks like he has a crushing attack on Laquan Whoa. Liam. Whoa! So ho. we need to check that out. This is an incredible position. Yeah, this, this looks good. What just... How did this happen? I mean, he just started... Um, Oh, yeah, let's, let's rewind a little bit. I did. I went to move, you know, 14, knight c e2, knight c4. Just took this pawn. And the important point is once this rook comes to b8, there is a lot of trouble down the b file. This bishop is also kind of indirectly protecting 
the b2 square because if you take it, I'll throw a discovery in with a knight move. So rook d2 is played, but that's just asking for trouble. Yeah. So how so, do you mate? That's the question because white is up a piece right now. Mm -hmm. Wait. I mean, black can take on d2, which is protected by the bishop, so it's not a queen, <laughs> a king queen fork, but it still looks very good. I guess the question is, can black sort of play slowly, or like how quickly does black have to operate here? Um, hmm, it's actually a really interesting position right now. It looks terrible for white, but then you're like, all right, I don't see the direct follow-up, and players often get nervous in situations like this, where you have two pieces for the rook as white, um, your king is feeling vulnerable, but you're just a several moves away from feeling much more confident about... But I mean, okay, actually, I, I take it back. How is your king ever going to get safety? Like, this bishop on... G7 is forever cutting it off in the diagonal. King to C2 doesn't look very safe ever. Bishop D7 followed by pawn A4 is clearly a threat. Right? Like this pawn will attack this knight. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Um, yeah, it looks like Daniel Narajewski is going to do some cleaning in this position. Much like in the background. <laughs> which I'm sure it's gonna stop at some point someone goes they're putting whipped cream on the ice cream I can hear it is that whipped cream on ice cream um I wish it was because then there'd be some bright side well Mr. Brightside is a good song that people appreciate so and there's always that uh, 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 yeah okay. um, I'm not sure if it's very loud no it's good you. now don't worry Okay. Whatever might be loud, your personality sh outshines it and is louder. So let's go. Aww. All right. Well, oh, they did they just make a move here? Nakamura and Caruana, surprisingly, cough, cough, sarcasm, drew their game. Completely uninteresting game. They didn't give us the fight that we we're all hoping to see. The most boring one that you said. Yeah, it's disappointing. It I wanted, proved, proved right. I wanted to see some exciting chest there okay so Nerditsky, how are you going to put this one away i might if i were you play rook a4 queen a8 and then mate along the a file something like that bishop a4 don't like that move rook c1 would be my immediate response for the kong the m okay still looks good for black by the way but i like trying to take over the a file more so rook c1 oh, sigh of relief you feel better now yeah Okay, just checking. Much better. Okay, we're good. Um, I can can now focus again. Where queen g4? That's an interesting move. I guess rook c4 is the only move that I see here. Just attacking the queen, protecting h4, something like that. Because again, I don't really. Want... The problem with losing h4 isn't as much the pawn as it is like the queen will come back to f6 and try to mate me again. So I don't really want that to happen. Oh man, I'd be surprised, but after rook c4, what can black try to do there? Well, if you go queen d1, I go rook c1 back, and I think we're just following each other. Right, no, so that doesn't work. Um, where else can he move his queen to d7? But then I go rook and you c7. play rook c7, yeah, exactly what you've been so he playing. So this is actually happening right now. Um, uh. Is there some possibility? for a queen sucker. I guess not. Like With this queen on d1, could he have played bishop takes b3 is my question. Because if rook takes d1, then can I just take back on d1 with my bishop perhaps and like try to go rook f8 to b8 and somehow mate your king? I mean, this is actually very interesting. If I'm Naroditsky, I'd really think about it. But it also depends how his team's doing in this match. Because, you know, if... Oh, let me see. His team is... Right. They have seven oh, they points. have seven and a half. They are tied with the Seattle Sluggers. Um, we saw in chat earlier that somebody was saying how David Pruse, their team captain, noted that their goal this matchup was just to do better than the Seattle Sluggers. So, hey, at least they're close to their goal. Yeah, I mean, just... You, sometimes you need risk it to get the biscuit. And here, if I'm Naroditsky, I'm certainly thinking about this kind of queen sacrifice these okay. are not my pieces so i'm totally down for it to happen even if it's bad but it looks at least entertaining 
Yeah, for sure. And it's funny because in the chat with Daniel Naroditsky and Laquang Lee at Munchos.com, there's people always saying, oh, they're so stupid, but the word that starts with an I. And it's, it's just so obnoxious when you have top players. Nobody plays perfectly. Come on. I mean, it's just hilarious because the people who say this stuff are the pe- obviously yeah. not nearly as good yeah, as Yeah, exactly. Chess, but... they, have, they probably have like engine lines on. Oh, so obvious. Yeah, don't feed the trolls. Yeah. That's what I've learned a long time ago. He's the sack of right. queen. He's doing it. I'll Bishop takes D3. Up. Bishop takes B3. Let's go, Danya. He's doing it. I'm telling you. I feel confident in Danya's ability to sacrifice his queen here. Bishop takes B3. Rook takes D1. Bishop takes D1. I could even then... maybe take on A2. I don't know. Like, Bishop A2 check. King C2. Two, two, one, two. No, uh, then I check on C8. I mean, that's scary as well. He's going to sack his queen to do it? I didn't look. No! Nobody's making me happy today, Alexandra. Well, maybe... No, we can't stick away from this game because I feel like they're either going to draw very soon or Daniel's sacking something. Yeah. Well, um, Wesley So, by the way, is doing work right now. Oh, he went back. He's playing for the win. I like it. Good decision. Like... A. Hey. Rook c7, I guess I'll move his queen to the back rank somewhere. I don't know. Queen d8. Queen Queen e8 is possible too, but that looks a little suspicious. Um, queen e8 is interesting, actually. Because queen d8, maybe you just go rook to b7. The point is that white is actually up material here with um, two knights for a rook and not even a... No, yeah, two knights for a rook, so not even a pawn for that. So I would try to trade queens if I am Le Quang Liam here. And rook to b7 looks like a decent option. Yep. Bishop c2 if you want to get defensive on the knight on b3 is also uh, probably a, a good move. So I, I yeah, this, I like that Nerodice is playing for the win here, but I'm not quite sure he'll be able to, yeah, rook c7 here. We've seen this position happen before. All right. Um... I'm also hopping between games, but we'll stay here. Whoa. Oh, okay. This is why we're staying here. What the heck? He's going for a win, but he might just be going for a loss because now queen g4 back. There it is. This knight on e5 is not well placed at all because once queen d1 check happens, your bishop on d2 is hanging. Your knight on b3 was very necessary to keep that protected. Yep. The knight on b3 was a very good protective piece here. Um so can he block the check okay he can but he loses a pawn queen f- and now queen f6 what this is ex- exactly what i was talking about before i want that h4 pawn so i could get my queen to the long diagonal queen f6 yeah. threatening mate in one how do you stop it to queen f6 um oh i thought queen you B2 have king was... c2 right yeah well i thought queen b2 was made i forgot there's a rook on b7 but i think i can you can try to block off the C file with putting one of your rooks on C8. Yes. Yeah, so Probably the F rook, bring it into the action, and they, then you're threatening queen but, A1, mate. But now you bishop C4 is the only move, I think. So bishop C4 stops you from mating me because queen A1 check is devastating. Here's bishop C4. But now queen takes F2, right? Like that, yeah, I like the pawn grabbing here. You're, um, you're so greedy. Well, it's not just pawn grabbing. You're also attacking the knight, the bishop, and another pawn, and the bank back rank, I'd say, that has enough threats to merit being a pawn grabber. Yeah, you take this pawn, you attack the knight, you attack the bishop, you attack the other pawn, you attack the back rank. I mean, the world is kind of your oyster at that point. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's definitely Daniel's oyster here. Oh, um, was not expecting that move. Why were we not expecting that move? Because... Just put your queen on the B file if you're white. Queen B4... Well, but black know. can still take on... Um... Your rook's hanging, though, on B8. That's the big problem. No, sorry. After rook takes B7. Well, I'll take with my queen. True. Whoa! Okay, moves that I'm not expecting at all. So take now take this rook on B7 and then take on F2. Just go back to your original plan. Yep. The original oh, wait, queen plan. B2 there check. we go. Queen's the knight on b7, actually. Okay. Queen d4 so, check. Go queen d4 and take the bishop. Don't take the knight. You're changing your mind about what black should take yeah. here. No, the bishop's definitely... You can also a... take on c4. Yeah, that's what you're just pointing out. Yeah, this is the better oh. piece to take. That was protecting the king. Now just play rook a4, pin the knight, take on a2. Just mop up here. Wow, Nerditsky is... Okay, this also has to be good. Queen... 
Okay, Queen C4 looks good. Rook B2, throwing Rook B1 check. There's probably another good move, like, okay, you want Rook B2. Queen D3, just slowly close in and suffocate that king. Yep. Now what? So now black can collect pawns and continue threatening checkmate on the back rank. Um, Rook takes F2, just keep collecting. Yep, continue collecting. Naroditsky the collector. Yikes. Everything went downhill very fast. There you go. He's, he's just collecting. Um, his queen has to move now. That's okay. So, he's up now enough material that he's happy camping. Yeah, you can even play queen g4 or trade the queen. Rook takes d2, hung, hangs the queen. So that was not a good look for the Kuang Liam. Yikes. Nerditsky, what a legend. How many points does he have? Too many. He's been killing it. I think he won all of his games except for one draw against Hikaru. No. Okay, we're going to stay on this Multan Li Junzhao ending. Well, that's just going to So, be yeah, Daniel's doing as well as Caruana. They both have four points, so now Daniel has five. Daniel's five points? Yep. And we're in our sixth game. He's got five out of six? Or seventh game, seventh game. Wait, no, this is the last round then? No, six. Wait, so Nerdis, he has four out of six or five out of six? He has five out of six. Are you kidding me? Nope. How in the world? He's been playing amazingly today. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a legend, but... Whoa! Are you serious right now? Let's check out the scoreboard. Naroditsky... It hasn't been updated yet. I see four. Yeah, there. it hasn't been updated yet. Okay, well, he's a beast. Um... Wait, they've only played oh, five okay. games. Hang on. I lied. I did the math wrong. They played five games, haven't they? Because the car was two and a half. Nigret, everybody is saying something different in chat. Okay, I'm just gonna wait for it to get updated. Yeah, I'm gonna. I, I quit. <laughs> okay. Well, he's doing very well regardless. And let's hop into the last game quickly. Ray Robson and Vinay Bot before it ends. Oh wow! I had the game between Momentine and Bonnie Lee X open, but yeah, the other game might be more interesting. Actually. I'm not sure what team is more interesting, but let's go to the Vinay bot game because you met. Oof. Ray Robson okay. cruising here. Rook yeah, to one. Is... F3, F2, or G2, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Okay, this... I think Vinay is going to resign soon and then we can hop on to the last game. Yeah, you can hide his king on G2 and then get a queen. Okay, sorry. He has four out of five. My bad. Yeah, it's okay. I, I thought it was. I thought it still had to be updated. No, you're you're totally cool because I was hoping it was around six. It was one in the morning, you know, for me. So the closer it is to around seven, the sooner I get to oh, pretend I'm sorry, like I'm going to go your, to sleep. Oh, I got your hopes up here. But hey, uh, Yoon Shen Li. No, sorry, Yoon Shen Li is not going to oh, be. Oh, like she blundered that pawn. It actually looked yeah. like she was making legitimate progress to like hold the game, and then she pushed the pawn too far. No. So King B four. Knight d7 check. Win the e5 pawn. Knight d no! Knight d7 check! Knight still knight d7 check. Win the e5 pawn. No! Ah! Yeah, if she takes the pawn, this is hard for white to win. Uh, yes! Do it! Next no, now it doesn't oh, work because the king is the f5 square. And the knight protects it. Uh... I know I'm not playing, so like there's zero stress on me, right? Like, it's, but, I actually want to read it. You know, you, you get angry at missed opportunities in chess games. Well, it's understandable. I, I just want to explain that. Like, people are always like, but you see everything. And I'm like, it's honestly so much easier for us because we're sitting here just looking at chess. If we're wrong, I'm like, okay, that was silly of me, my bad, moving on, fixing our mistakes. But when they make a mistake, it affects them and their team, so they really have. So much more riding on each individual. Rook G2. Oh my gosh, Tagwan just said the best thing. Imagine having Robert as a coach. Oh, I'm I'll actually, never forget. I'm so nice to my students. I'm, yeah, but it pains you so badly when they lose. I remember oh, yeah. the Olympiad. Yeah, but it, it, you know. It's fair. It's because you care and you're a good coach. So. Yeah, I do care a lot. I care too much sometimes. <laughs> The truth coming out. It hurts so deep. All right, I'm going to go back to that moment, though. All right. Move 77 black. Okay, knight, I'm with you there. Knight d7 check instead of whatever. I'm forgetting what's played in the game. King, king b5. Knight d7 check hits the king and the pawn. And look yep. at the knight 
on d4 covers f5 and e6, the only squares that can keep the pawn protected. So you are able to gather that pawn on e5 for free. And that makes yep. your chance. And then what you'd want to do is just keep your knights connected somehow after, let's say, king e7, knight takes e5, um, any move. You could put your knight on f3 or on c6. Yeah, because and normally, right, you could sacrifice a rook for two piece and be happy. But not yeah. in this end game because if you try to sacrifice your rook for the two knights, you only have a knight left and you can't win. So you just keep those knights connected like that, and it's going to be a very difficult task for your opponent to win this game. Yep. <sighs> well, so there are how many games left? Two games or one game? Two rounds left. Two rounds left. Okay. St. Louis Archbishop's cruising through 14 points. Um, Liam Shea is getting some sleep because it's 1 a.m. For you and Hess, he has homework tomorrow, so he has a good reason to go to sleep. Who is homework? Have a good night, and thanks for watching. Oh, Liam Shea. I was like... Whoa, uh, Dingley Ren, does he really only have two out of five? Who did Dingley Ren just lose to? Oh, oh he's, man. He started his game already, so I didn't even have time to look. We can't see, yeah. Who did he just lose to, though? Actually, I can just look this up real quick. Yeah. Chef's house. He lost to Anton Smirnov with the white pieces he had, and he lost with white. Disappointing Wait. fans everywhere is Dingley Ren. Hey, everybody has bad games. Yeah, that's pretty true. <laughs> Cash no. Mikey, I want to see a game with a fortress because I just read Digital Fortress by Dan Brown. Oh, I saw that article. It looked interesting. I didn't look at it yet, but I'd like to. Dave Hogg, I have to be covering NHL morning skate in nine hours, but I'm not going to sleep until this is over. Way to be, Dave Hogg. Way to be. And I'm sure the Canadian that I'm commentating with is particularly happy about covering a morning skate, huh? A? Of course, eh? <laughs> I love the A. Uh, okay, I do too. It's a Canadian specialty. Um, so which game do you want to start with? I'd, I'd recommend one, but I'm worried you're just going to destroy the choice and say how that opening is boring. So yeah. I'm going to look for a Petrov. I saw Hikaru played some H6 stuff, but I want to give a shout out to NY Marshalls. That's, I believe, the account of the New York Marshalls that are playing in it is, it the Pro Chess League and saying Marshall attack. So clearly wants us to stay on this game because it stemmed from a Marshall attack. Oh, where should we go? You tell me where to go. I don't care um, if you, what you think I think. I just want you to tell me. I kind of want to pick a really boring game just to see you in, in pain a little bit. Um, but that seems unreasonable of me. So let's look at... Who, who, where, who is Manu David? What's his... Oh, there it is. Manu David is Manu David. So he's four and a half out of five. And okay, he's let's see his games. Let's Raymond see his games. Sung. So, and wow, they've already played pretty quickly here. Yeah, what's going on in this game? I love white's position. Oh, white is down a pawn, though, but the g4 pawn is not going to last very long. The bishop on g2, what do you call that, Alexandra? Is it the best piece on the board? or Definitely the best piece on the board. Um, controlling the long diagonal there. It's just, it's a beautiful dream bishop. This looks terrible for black. d4 is falling, knight c4 hits a5, b7. As soon as we say he's doing well and come to his game. Do I regret it? Yeah, I, I don't know. Whoa, he currently needs eight more followers to break 50,000 on Twitch. Yeah, I'm still not going over to his game. I see what you're doing here. Even the little subtle hints, like, hey, like, let me mention it, Carl. I'm just going to shout him out in the chat. I mean, he deserves it. You guys, if you haven't checked out Grandmaster Hikaru yet, you could do it either by the link I just put in chat or by hovering on his channel when you go a little bit under Hess on the screen, one click, just like Amazon, one click to buy, it's one click to follow. Yep. yep. But Amazon ain't coming to New York anymore, so some of the people in the chat might be like, ah, oh, I can't, you know, I can't go that that low for Amazon no more. <gasps> Sorry, that's <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I I left more than I should have. It's all good. Devious anyway. coconut. Get yourself a bishop that can do both. That is a this bishop on G two is doing the most here. Get yourself a bishop that can do both. That's a great meme, Devious coconut. If it isn't already, I'm going to make it a meme. And my real question to Divas Coconut is if he puts the lime in. 
That's, that's what I gotta know. So I'll let and the cook unit. He exactly. got it. He got the 50k. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. Um, 50k. Hit Karu. Now win some games for your team so it could be even sweeter. Uh, there we go. He, he's, he's getting better. He has two and a half now. Uh, okay. Bishop takes Bye. b7 is an auto play for white right now. Take the pawn. Take. You think if I cheer for him to take b7? Let's try it. Take the, the pawn. pawn. Take oh, the. No more cheering. Okay. Knight c4. A dream was ruined. Uh, but this is also good. He can take it after um, because it makes sense that black just wants a castle here. So it kind of worked. Yeah, now if rook a b8, knight takes a5 happens. If rook a7, at some point I'll just move my bishop and play b6 with tempo. This position looks real bad for Manu David. And by the way, it says 2044 next to his name in his live rating. Like he's gained 350 points or something ridiculous. So. He, um, is wow. Like, he's really 24 so he, plus. He's actually 2300. Makes sense why he's playing so well. Yeah, he's, um, he's a monster. Okay, well, I'm done looking at this game because I'm yep. impressed by Raymond Song, my board four that I chose my fantasy team. So, where do what I. What about Daniel Naroditsky and Chef's House? Ding Chef Loren. House. All right. Yeah. It's a chef. Dun, dun, house. I dun, love it. Dun, Have dun, you seen the movie dun. Chef, by the way? No. Really good. Really good. I recommend it. Okay, I will have to make a note of that. Okay. Um, can I sit, set Twitch to take the pawn only mode? Crazy Coffee Man asked. That'd be pretty funny. You uh, can only comment if you comment the phrase. Whoa. Okay, what's going whoa. on here? They just need three moves and a few seconds. I'm confused and my head hurts. Too many moves just happened. Um, wait a second. If you take on e4 and I take back with my pawn at some point, your knight on d5 will be pinned. So that means... There's going to be some tactic here that allows white to escape, I think. Maybe. Hopefully. Right. Because the knight can't just be lost. Um, so I, since the knight can't move, maybe there's an offensive way we can defend the knight. That's always a great option. So I, I was thinking of playing like pawn f4, but the problem is after f takes e4, d takes e4, my pawn is still pinned to my rook. So black can just move the king over to h8 and say, you actually can't win my knight on d5, even though it was just pinned and you didn't move your king, because the ee pawn is actually pinned to the white rook. So lots mm -hmm. of pins going on. Yep. This is a pinful game. Oh, I see what you did there. Look at you go. Learning from the vest. Um, okay. Good night, Malza. Thank you for watching. Good night. And oh, New York Marshalls is saying how St. Louis is going to take over first place in the Atlantic, definitely. And it is hard for, to prep against them in a round robin. That makes sense. Yeah, St. Louis, real good. Real, real good. Um, okay, but I think Bishop F4 might be the way to go. So I've just been thinking about what's about to happen. If I okay. take on E4, I have Bishop F3 check to follow for black. So Bishop F4 connects my rook, so keys my rook protected, offers mm -hmm. a trait that he just he played something. So let me see. He played Bishop F4. Good on Nerdisky. So bishop f4, g takes f4. Now you want to take my knight, because otherwise I can move it now that I connected yep. my rooks. So you take my knight, I take your pawn, and now your knight on d5 yep. is pinned to your king on. And that last move, d takes e4, is a key move here, since white is going to win his knight back. So it's defending it in a, an offensive way, but you had to calculate quite a few moves to see that. Yep. And good night, Face Chess. Thank you so much for watching, and good one, Joe Bruin. Good night, Face Chess. It's midnight where? In St. Louis? Yeah, it's 1, 8, it's 1 a.m. here in uh, New York, 108 to be precise. So no sympathy for the tired St. Louis team. Well, you don't, you don't need to, to sleep, right? I thought you just plug the cord in and your batteries start charging automatically. That's true, but I have too many. My uh, outlet is completely full over here. I even have just like a, an extra power cord, but. Right. Yeah, so careful. You know, when you're on low battery mode, the performance goes down. So. But okay, I'm gonna the, fight this it. game was simplified, so I guess we can take a look at another game and come back to this one. Sure thing. Which one? Which game do we uh, go to? I am taking a peek at some other games here. Okay. Um, are there any games we haven't looked at yet? Tons Do we want to prioritize those? Let's go to Sahaj Grover and Molten. Sahaj Grover, I found you. 
Whoa, white is up. Just because there's pawns. a lot of pins. White's up two pawns though, so I would just move my queen somewhere that protects my bishop, and then be happy about it. So queen to d3. Looks like one move. Oh, there's bishop c4. Did I walk into that? Yep, bishop c4 is a scary threat after. Um, oh, my, is there any wait, other? my queen was on d3 and bishop c4 was played. And then white went queen to f5, but maybe white could have went queen c3 as well. But okay, so then instead of queen d3, wait, I don't see where else my queen can go. So queen e4, bishop d5 just played. Mm -hmm. And now queen, queen, oh, queen g4, that's nice. So the reason why this is so nice, you go bishop e6, I can go bishop takes f6, you take my queen, I take your rook and e7 with my bishop, attacking your queen, and then I'm going to pick and your bishop up at the end, and I'll have two minor pieces and a rook for a queen, which is more than enough compensation. That's just a winning amount of material. So bishop... That's, that's really nice. Um, does black have another option here? Maybe, rook, let's say, rook c e8 doesn't work? No. Because... Be oh, you lose a bishop at the end. Puzzle rush, bishop f6, queen f6, rook e7, rook e7, queen c8, check. King h7, rook takes e7, queen takes n, queen f5, check, and I win the bishop on d5. Wow, Hess, you went over that line so slowly. Could you slow down any more? I mean, I I, I put it on the, the screen for everybody to see, and I still have it yeah. up. I'm just saying, I, I put the puzzle Chat, rush tactic. W was that fast or slow? Let us know. <laughs> just puzzle rush in full force. You know me. So I say, oh, last puzzle rush, and then I'm like, just kidding. Got to do one more. So Yeah, too slow. There you go. So slow it took multiple frames to show, man. <laughs> oh, here it comes, that bishop e7 stuff. Beautiful, just the line you pointed out. Yep. Here it comes, give me that bishop, and I just win the game. So, so how's Grover? Oh, Daniel and uh, Ding Liren drew their game, the one we were just looking at that had simplified. Gotcha. So Nerdisky continues his great performance for the mechanics. Yep. He's really the reason they're in second place right now, tied with the Shangdu That's Panthers. incredible, because they've been doing so poorly overall. Yeah, but they're on the comeback trail, because once Shanklin came back, and you know, he, Shanklin was started like one and a half out of seven in the first Battle Royale, and that really didn't do the team any favors, but since then, they've really recovered quite nicely, and the team has been playing well in the last few weeks. That's true. Oh, no, um, my flip-flop. We haven't out. looked at Hikaru and Adiban's game yet. Is it because Hikaru played something that I didn't want to see? Uh, Let's see, move one. Oh, H6. He may have played H6, but if you don't go that early, you're not going to see. He played another similar line, except that he made it look more like a French exchange. Whoa, and what's happening in this game? Because Hikaru is up a piece now, and I don't see any checkmate for Adivan, which means that Hikaru is probably just a ton better here. Um. He probably is. If I were playing black here, I'd still be a little bit afraid just because I'm always afraid when there's pawns on the fourth rank facing my king. Yeah, I like ready to push forward. Uh, how do you realize so quickly that there's nothing to be afraid of here as black? Didn't we talk about this? I'm afraid of no nothing and nobody. That's true, but um, can you try to give some advice for the regular non-robot population? <laughs> <laughs> okay, on a serious note, I see that white currently has just one pawn for the piece, right? Black has five pawns, white has six. And I see that, all right, this knight, queen on h4, knight on h5 configuration means that the knight wants to come to f6, but I have my knight on h7 and my queen on d6 protecting that square. Mm -hmm. And now I want bishop g6 so I can take this knight off the board. And once I take this knight off, you lose one of your very important attackers, and it's hard to attack with a lone queen against a king knight configuration on the side of the board. So I don't see right. a continuation for white that allows him, to, and he just moved his knight to g3, which is threatening pawn to f5 now, right? That's the idea. Now, if I play pawn f5, I trap your bishop on g6. But I think right. black can just go bishop takes c2 and use the length of the diagonal to, well, win a pawn, first of all, but then also just to allow that bishop more access to the d3 square, and it will survive, and he took on c2. And my king... On h8, how is it even vulnerable at this moment? Because I don't see how white creates any attacking chances. Okay, so you were first looking at the attacking pieces. You realize white didn't have 
that much and the only way to save his knight would be to retreat here and then when you were done with that you just looked a little bit more at the position that's gonna be my summary of robo hess's analysis here i just feel like white doesn't have enough pieces in the attack really is the way i would sum it up overall and mm -hmm. like right now knight f6 is the intention but my bishop on c2 still even defends my knight on h7 so um can I just play d3, d2 and try to queen my, for myself? That's one possibility. Another is to go bishop to f5 so that white can no longer push those pawns. And now my bishop on f5 uh, will forever defend this knight on h7. So he went rook e2. And I guess he's planning to meet knight f6 with some sort of counterattack, maybe queen to c6 and try to mate uh, white first. Yep. Now he's the one who has the attack here as well as the pass pawn. So I think it's safe to say that this is winning for Hikaru, especially since we explained the attack here as well. Yeah, for sure. And by we, I mean Queen you did two that. Checkmate. Can Hikaru see checkmate oh, on one? Oh no, did he miss a maiden one? Please see it, Hikaru. Don't pull a Wesley. Don't do it. Fireheart offered a draw. No, he did Yes, he did. You're joking. I'm dead serious. Maybe he meant to resign and click the wrong button. Mm, okay, let's go with that. I'm just trying to, you know, come up with something that's not disrespectful. That's probably what happened, yeah. Okay, well, that's checkmate on the board. Hikaru didn't miss it. I went to the Wang Yu game versus Vinai Bot because I love Wang Yu's position. And by the way, a lot of people might not know who Wang Yue is. He was one of those, the earlier Chinese superstars because he crossed 2700, even crossed 2750, and the guy is like a technical wizard. He's so good at end games, his technique is nearly flawless. He's known as, as just a supreme end game player. Now bishop c4, by the way, just wins for white, because I know that there's, if this bishop is moved, I've, I'll show the checkmate maybe after the game, yep. but rook g, actually I'll show it right now, why not? He, he and played he just played bishop c4, so might as well show it. Yeah, so he won't take on c4, but if he does take on c4, rook g7 check, king h8, rook h7 check, king g8, rook, other rook to g7, and your king is out of squares over here. And white is able to just push his king forward. Um, he didn't take the pawn right away. He didn't want to allow the bishop to take the bishop with check and yep. went on time. And the, oh, he flagged. Yeah, and the reason why, I mean, black doesn't have any moves because even yep. if you start pushing your pawn, say g5, you're still not threatening my bishop because I still have the same checkmate. And I actually can trade off everything now on f7 and just suggest that, okay, this end game here is completely winning for white as I have five pawns and four pawns. I'm off a clear pawn. My king is first to the action as well, and that would be an easy win for uh, Wang Yue. He's so good. Well, nice. Yeah, he's so strong. That was... I mean, there's other games that are even more difficult to play than this that he's pulled off, but this was very clean as well. So credit given where it's deserved. Yeah, and shout out over there to SS Sareen saying, you guys are so cool. First time watching this, and I'm thinking of coming back to watch games more often. Well, we hope you do come back. Thanks for saying that. Well, we just don't want him to ever leave, right? So he doesn't even need to yeah, come exactly. back if he never leaves. That's true. Just stay here forever with us. <laughs> Jack, don't go. Oh, sorry. We're not reenacting the Titanic. My bad. You know, different scene. Never let go. Never let go. Never go. Okay. Fabiana okay. Caruana, Laquang Liam. Hmm. Knight G7 check at some point. No, it doesn't really do much. I don't see how either side makes progress. All of white's pawns on light squares. The black rook has no way to get into the action. This looks like a draw, likely. Because it's just so hard for either side to make progress here there's no pawn weaknesses the king on e2 can't move forward the black king on f5 is not going to be able to come to attack the pawn on h3 because the knight is blocking the g3 square yep so yeah it does look it does look pretty dryish here yeah i guess the only thing that i can see black doing is maybe playing b5 at some moment and then just trying to open up that queen side so the rook can maybe get to the b2 square. If that rook gets into the action, then all of a sudden you have to be really worried about your h3 pawn. And actually, I think that's what 
Le, uh, Le should do. Instead of playing king e6 like this, he should put his pawn f6. Okay, they just agreed on a draw. But yep. I thought he should have put his pawn on um, f6 because, well, what's the problem with putting your pawn in a dark square? You can now try to get your king to f4 and g3. If this knight comes back to f5, just as, as you said, to prevent the king mm -hmm. from getting to g3, black can start with b5, and if we trade these pawns, maybe, you know, I, I wouldn't do it, but maybe I could even consider sacrificing another pawn just to get my rook into the action, but just rook takes b5 first, then play for a4, and try to finally get my rook into the game. So that's just what I was thinking. I thought black had no losing chances whatsoever, so there was no risk in playing on, but the Webster windmill, no, not but, the Western Windmills are in seventh place right now. Yeah, I think he, I think he should have played on. Ooh, seventh place? Yep. That's surprising. Such a strong team to be so close to the bottom. Um, yep. That That's okay. It happens sometimes. Uh, let's see. There's only a couple games left. Seven games left. So which game should we go to? I see Ray Robson playing Wesley So. I'm sure that's going to mm -hmm. be... A good game here. Wesley so with the black pieces. Even and, and they're they're friends, right? They know each other pretty well. They were college roommates, I believe. Yeah, so that sucks to play your college roommate. They probably are pretty close, and there's no joy in beating somebody who you're that close with. Are you sure about that? Well, not everybody is the kind of person who takes pleasure in their friend's pain, but some people are, and that's okay, Robert. Tum Look, Teasy. they just drew. Tum Teasy with the Anchorman reference, and I love it. Way to be, Tum Teasy. Yeah, this game was a draw, so they can just happily split the point. That way they don't become frenemies. I see you, I see you, Alexandra. You're trying to respect the friendship here. That's what I was trying to do, and they, they did draw that. I put chess first. Chess before all else. I mean, I'm Chess before friends, yep. Just you heard it here first. Let's check in on uh, Bonnie Lee X and Roaring Seawolf. So Yuan Shen Li and Andrew Hong. Whoa, so many pieces are on the board. How yeah, they still have a lot of pieces. They've only made 34 moves Wait, and they're both in time pressure. You know why there's so many pieces? Because Black's up a piece. I wasn't even thinking. Like I was just like looking at the board. I was like, oh, a lot of pieces. But then I counted the miners and Black is up a dark square bishop for two pawns. But H5 can be captured right now. This knight can hop into c4 if it wants. I would even consider taking on g2 and just putting my knight on d5. All these look very appealing for Andrew Hong. The queen takes h5, which is a free pawn, and then the rook can swing over to g6. So looking really problematic for Yun Chen Li. Yeah, and her position is also very hard to defend here. 20 seconds, I'm expecting that she's probably going to make a mistake pretty soon dreamer sleeper clearly a stylesian what's up don't know who you are but a uh, nice reference there shout out um okay f5 played whoa bishop g2 threatens made on h1 that's why the rook was not able to be captured and now this wait rook rookie two doesn't that just win the queen here yep you saw it first okay okay didn't Let's want to give stay. up two rooks for the queen apparently but that was definitely a winning move and just to reiterate that, rookie two. Pins and wins. Instead. Pins and wins, exactly. I mean, you. Well, rookie two is still looking good here because it's threatening H2, mate. Yeah. Andrew Holmes uh, just being greedy, just taking everything. He's like, a rook takes E1. Then he can. So, rook B2 eventually also works. Yeah, this is pretty painful. Maybe let's switch to another game since they're almost done. Okay, let's go to Tom Polgar versus Josh Bloomer. That's Tom Polgar versus Violent. Con contemplation or something like that. I can't see the end of the username. Yeah. But oh, look at this opposite color bishop's position, but white has the very important two separate pass pawns, which is enough to win, especially with his king so offside on h5. So what white is going to do is after a takes b5, just take back. And now g4 check followed by g5 is certainly an option. In fact, bishop g5 threatens bishop. No, miss checkmate in two. Bishop G5. Oh, Bishop G5 and G4. Bishop G5 threatened G4 with checkmate. Oh, yeah. So he would have had, Well, after Bishop G5, he would have had to play Bishop D1. And, and then, then you have B6. Yeah. B, B7. Or B6. So Bishop yeah. G5 now still is going to be good. But okay, then Bishop D7 check. Uh, at least. No, Bishop G5. 
bishop d7, and then take on e4. Oh, actually, that, that does not work. Don't listen to me. I'm making bad suggestions. Don't do it. He's just going to push his g-pawn like at first thought he should do. And you can't stop both g-pawn and b-pawn. But, yeah. Okay. This is a nice, instructive endgame. Uh, just continue with g6 here. G7. After g7, now he can play. Oh, I guess he can move his bishop first. Yeah, he'll take the pawn on e3. Yeah, take and then push. Okay, or not. The Look famous this. hag's teeth. Oh. Or that that's what we call this, these positions in Romanian. With the two pawns. <laughs> Sounds super so offensive. Gaps in the middle. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just translating what I learned from my coaches, okay? Yeah. I mean, if you've ever seen, like, you know, Beauty and the Beast, for example, you know how, like, talking about someone like that is just grounds for terrible repercussions that you don't want to deal with. I mean, I'm just, just throwing out the reality here. Wow. All right. Well, oh, the last game also just ended All right, before I become cursed. All right, Cash Mahe just did something really funny. What's crazy, Hess's best friend growing up was Mitchell Heckmate because my last name is Hess, so checkmate in the chest. That's actually, that is the most clever way that someone has uh, made a joke about my last name, so props. And also, yes, Tom Polgar is um, Susan Polgar's son. That's Tom Polgar Schutzman. Yep. Do, so I, do. I feel like he must have had some good coaching growing up. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm trying to think, like, if coaching your kid is, like, the way to go. There's, like, a lot of, just in general, coaching someone you know can be very difficult. I've had friends of mine ask me to coach them, and it's really hard because you, like, tend really not to want to hurt their feelings. You're talking about this kind of before of playing your friend. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Like, if you coach just, like, a friend of yours, you, like, feel like... They feel pressure to get good, and they feel like, oh, I'm not learning this well enough. I feel stupid. And you're like, you're not stupid. And like, of course you're going to say that. This is not right. drawing from personal experience or anything. But, uh... uh... Did you... Did one of your childhood coaches tell you things like this, and were they your dad? No, I only had one coach, Miron Cher. Shout out, Miron. Best coach ever. Um, you know, he definitely you know, it was harsh sometimes being like, you know, you got to get this right, but yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously the Polgar family is famous since their dad coached all three of them and he was a psychologist and he wanted to prove that you can create geniuses with the right techniques if you are dedicated to it since the beginning, <laughs> but not everybody had that growing up. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. All right, so let's look at the standings. Um, mm -hmm. Has Chengdu played St. Louis yet? I think the answer is no, because I don't remember focusing all of my attention on Caruana versus Dingley Ren, but that's going to happen next game because yep. these... Wow, wait, also Seattle's in tie for third place? How did they catch up like that? Because Georgie Margvillas, really, my pick for board three is dominating. My picks for board three and board four are doing really well. My pick for board two, Wesley So, is half... Whoa, Wang Yue is five and a half out of six, by the way. Um, well, you were talking about how brilliant he is, so... Well, he's the OG panda. Yeah. Um, he's so good. I have so much respect for his chess game, honestly. But, um, okay, let's take a look at the overall picture here. So, Alexandra, I'm sure you, we're both surprised with Dingley Ren only having two and a half points. Yep. Besides that, what stands out to you on this scoreboard? You already pointed to Wang Yue, who has done incredibly so far. Um, fourth board is nothing too surprising there since Manu is 2,300. He's really strong. Um, on the first boards, Hikaru did start off not so well, but now he's caught up. Daniel Narajitsky playing very well. I think how well Daniel has done is a bit of a surprise. He's definitely overperformed what we expected. Oh, I thought he and Dingley Ren would switch scores, right? Like that yeah. Narajitsky would have two and a half out of six, and Dingley Ren would have four and a half. That's much more like their ratings. But Daniel Narajitsky proving to be a force in um, well this online rapid format. And oh my gosh, Cash Manke oh. has only had one coach, the 27 year old CompSci grad student who programmed him as a capstone project. <laughs> wow, that's pretty awesome. 
that, this is well played. Josh, so Dave Hogg says, Josh Bloomer, three out of six, is massive for St. Louis. Completely agreed. In fact, I picked, one of the questions for the fantasy this week was, um, which team do you think is going to win each battle royale? And I thought that Shangdu would win, and the real reason I thought they would win was because I thought Yunshan Lee would do better than Josh Bloomer on board four. I thought the top three were a bit of a toss-up because Fabiano mm-hmm. and Ding Li Ren are you know, almost equivalent, although Fabiano is doing much better this week. Wang Yue, Wesley So, another toss-up to me. Wesley So is higher rated, but Yang, Wang Yue has the, more, uh, the higher score here. And then Zha Jun with Nicholas Theodoro. I definitely thought Zha Jun would do better, but Theodoro is also uh, a very, very strong player. So it was sort of a toss-up between those three boards, and I really thought Yun Shen Li would outperform Josh Bloomer. But as you see, that three-to-one difference on board four is the difference between St. Louis and Chengdu right now in this Battle Royale. So I made yeah. the wrong pick, it looks like. Well, it's really hard to predict, um, but that was, that was good to point out. We have seen in previous PCLs the fourth board being a big indicator for how well the team is doing in the standings. But it, it's hard to pick. It's hard to pick the the right strategy. Yeah, for sure. Of how to place your players? Oh, so many things are difficult, especially at one thirty in the morning. I'm just gonna put it out. It's one thirty. How are you hanging on, Hess? I'm just gonna. You you're know, doing okay there. I'm hanging on by a thread. Hang hanging on by a thread. No, but you're, you're thinking. Um, fine. That is not the right lyric. But it's mine. Okay. Hey. Yeah, we fixed it. Hey, I th- really thought you were about to sing like "Living on a Prayer" for a second. Oh, oh. Yeah, exactly. We're almost there. Oh no! Okay. Oh no! I'm gonna drink this water and then pretend like I'm listening to your singing. Well, hey, the chess has started, so that's good. Oh, that water was great. Oh, okay, chess has started. Um, okay, Naomi Bashkansky. She's, I know it's we're halfway there, but we're almost there for Hess's bedtime. Not quite. right. Close, sort of, kind of, maybe. Nah. Uh, <laughs> okay, but if I'm Naomi Bishkansky, I'm looking to use this H three pawn as a as a hook. We've talked about the concept of a hook many times today, but I want to play Knight of Six. I want to play Rook G eight. I want to play G five G four. This is sort of wishful thinking because white will try to play c3 and d4 and just blast open the center. It's my king's on e8. But this reminds me of the game between Levon Aronian and Vladimir Kromnik from the 2018 candidates where that rook g8 kind of maneuver happened very quickly. Well, it's it's still very early on in the game here. This I wonder the- if they have seen that before and if they're going to reference it or if they're just playing a pretty common line here. I th- probably that one. Yeah, probably just playing. and Because Manu David moved instantly, and Naomi Bishkansky is thinking, so I think she may not be super familiar with this move order. But let's go to Fabiano Caruana in Ding Li Ren. Whoa, what is... Okay. This reminds this me of the game Sviddler Caruana. I think that was the game from the 2000... 2000- so you're also a walking chess game database um okay. on occasion but Spidler Carwana like 2016 Sinkfield Cup I don't remember the year uh, I'm actually gonna look this up right now to verify but this this opening looks very familiar to me and May 2017 is it 2017 come on game is loading yeah 2017 chess Sinkfield base Cup. yeah forget chess base the new and upgraded edition Hess base doesn't just have the chess database for you, but it's connected with a type of Alexa device that also explains it and will tell you it. I, so uh, I thought you were reading it, but you just came up with it all on your own. I was just <laughs> like, I was really befuddled there. I was, I was shocked. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, okay, so can you tell me your thoughts on the position between Ding Liren and Fabiano Caruana? Who would you prefer to play as here? Definitely with the white pieces. And okay. the reason why is I look at his bishop on e6 and I look at its counterpart on g2, and I definitely like the bishop on g2 much better. The knights on b. <laughs> Sorry, that was a funny comment. Which I'm one? the attached Alexa device, and you're the database. <laughs> That's actually really funny. 
Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to laugh and interrupt. No, no, you know, you can interrupt me anytime. In fact, I would prefer that you speak that I, than I speak, but I know you say, no, Robert, you should definitely speak because for some reason people like I just like don't want you to lose your speaking abilities, you know? Got to practice them. Gotcha. Well, I thought they were just programmed into me, so I didn't really have a choice. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the position. Okay, knight b8 was the move I was actually going to recommend coming to c6. Mm -hmm. I didn't like white's recapture with the bishop on d4. I thought that the knight should just capture on d4 and then attack this bishop on e6, and white is just slightly better in most lines. But knight b8 to c6 is a great decision to reroute that knight because the knight d7 had nowhere great to go, whereas the knight c6 immediately attacks the bishop on d4 and kicks white back a little bit. Um, definitely a fan of that. Yep, so he had to reposition his knight here and a lot of times when you're repositioning obviously it's going to take him two moves to change the position of a piece that's already moved once how do you decide that it's worth the lost tempos or just how much how long it's going to take i think without an immediate way to punish uh black mm -hmm. you know then knight to be c6 makes sense a bishop e5 is a way to try that putting your piece on c7 but knight c6 if you go knight c7 with the fork emote well, the problem is now I take on e5, and I'm removing the, your knight's axis away from once you capture one of these rooks, either the a8 or the e8 rook, your knight's not getting out of there. So black will get away with two minor pieces for the cost of just one rook. So knight c6, bishop c7, and I guess I'll play bishop f4 now, but it looks like black has uh, totally equalized to me because the one threat is going to be knight to c7. I'm just not going to allow it. And I yep. think uh, black is much comfier now that that pair of knights were traded off. When you have less space and your pieces are sort of cramped, trading off pieces generally helps free up the remaining pieces you have left. Okay, so maybe we can call this a good time to check out how some other players in the St. Louis and Chengdu Panda matchup is doing since they're competing for first place here. They will get an extra $500 and more points towards their overall score. And they can feel free to donate that $500 to me if they want. I know like some of the people. In the the Hangry Hess Fund. Yep, we we can order you food. Yeah, for real. So, Fabi, if you're listening, you know, you shouldn't be listening because you're playing. But if you win this matchup, we've known each other a long time, feel free to get your team to take me out to dinner. Sounds like a good time for all. I like it. I think that should be included as part of every single prize fund. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, which, right. who else is in this match? So I'm looking at the game between Wesley, Grandmaster Wesley and Grandmaster Wang Yue. So it's WY versus WS here. And yes, exactly. Whose position do I like and why? Whose position do you like and why? I don't want to do all the talking. Your turn. All right, um, so let me think a little bit here. Okay. So black has the bishop pair, but also he has a more awkward pawn structure, and the position is closed. After b takes c6, then he's going to have a backwards pawn on c6. That looks like it's going to be a target, um, so I would prefer white here. I agree with you completely. And I would like white's position even more if this knight on d2 like could successfully go to c5 in one move or perhaps you yeah. could go to f4 like those squares feel are very safe for my knight and they're more advanced where they at least put some pressure on black's position but you're totally right this pawn on c6 is going to be really annoying uh for black to like, continuously defend the good news though is it's actually not so easy for white to gang up on any of the pawns the f5 pawn is particularly well defended and perhaps black will try to put the pony on e4 and trade off uh, a pair of knights. Put the pony on e4, exactly. Um, that would be a pretty good position, pretty good square for the knight. Can't disagree with you there. What if white just kicks him out though? So actually, yeah. F3. White might start with f3, right? It's actually probably a good move. And f3 not only stops the knight from coming to e4, but at some point you might consider playing pawn h3 and pawn g4. And yes, mm -hmm. you undouble black's pawns, but you capture it with this H pawn towards the center and open up the H file for yourself to maybe launch a counterattack. And right, especially with the bishop on D three, that's already pointed towards the H seven pawn. For sure. And an additional point is that if this F five pawn is removed, 
and I take with the H pawn, then White can even play for pawn to E4 and try to take back with the pawn and get a huge center. So um, these sort of options are looking possible for White. So he took on C6 first, your idea. Okay. And now what, he had an isolated pawn that he now traded off and got a backwards pawn. So that made sense pawn structure wise. Yep. But now knight e4 does look good, but he can continue with f3 right after. Yeah, f3. So. Um, you're attacking c6, but your knight's pinned if you take on c6. So maybe rook f to b8 is still possible here. Just saying, if you please take my pawn on c6, because then I can go rook b4. Oh, no, rook b4, you have rook a6. I miscalculated. But I thought I was just winning your knight on a4 because it's pinned, but you have rook mm -hmm. a6 simply cutting off my rook's access to the a file and trading. So something like that is certainly looking quite acceptable and, in fact, good for white. Mm -hmm. uh, a position that's not looking good for white is Anton Smirnov against Daniel Naroditsky's game. Since Daniel's been performing so well, he definitely deserves us taking another glance at his game. Why is he so good? <laughs> You're asking the hard questions. I mean, seriously. So, yeah, how the heck did he, he get Anton in this position so quickly? Uh, let's move 20, and it just looks like my king has been bombed. He's hiding in the shelter, but it, it's too it's too late. Yeah, There's holes. It's and, not sturdy. And blacks up a pawn, for the record. So, Right. Um, I didn't even pay attention to the material count because White's king was just so poor here. But he's also up a pawn on top of this already crushing. Yeah, so you, you know White does have some counterplay in the form of a very advanced. The, the, the advanced pawn structure on the king side makes the king side very vulnerable, right? There's a lot of air in front of the king. Some sacrifices might be in the cards. But if I'm able to play a move like f5 successfully, I'm clearly gaining some momentum as from White's perspective on that side of the board as well. Of course, f5 immediately is met by the bishop takes f5 because the g-pawn is pinned to the king on g2. So don't go trying to go f5 too soon or else you'll just be actually losing a pawn directly. Yeah, let's not get too crazy here with f5. Um, it's one, but, it's one forty in the morning. What do you mean don't get too crazy? That's true. 1.40 in the morning in New York, I'd expect you to be having some beautiful house party in the background, you know? Oh, don't tempt me. Knight takes g4, though. That's that's tempting. <laughs> that is much more tempting, I yes. mean, knight g4, pawn g4, bishop g4 with bishop f3, discovered check with the king on g2. Discovered double check, I should say. Your rook on d1 is now hanging by my bishop and by the rook. I like it. I, I think it's too tempting to not take, especially since he's already a pawn up. He's not going to do it. Now that we both agreed, he's like, nope, they're on the same page. Can't do it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. We can never be right about predicting a move when we both like it. Definitely not. Unacceptable. But I am curious to see what he's going to play here. He's going to play knight takes g4. I'm hoping. He's going to do it. Do it, do it. Yeah. Do it, do it. So who else is in this match? So we have Wesley So's game. We have... Yeah. Chess uh, Fat Bear and... Criari. Okay, got whoa. How did that pawn get to c6 so so fast? Especially with a pawn on b6 and a pawn on d6. Um, you know, I move back to move 19 and it's like the guards were sleeping and they just let him in. He just like literally didn't take it with anything and it just kept going. Yeah. Um, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. This looks questionable for black. I mean, that's a clean pass pawn. I can even go b5 here. Like b5 and take with my rook on b5. That way, the, you know, I just try to open up the b funk and my rook to b7. Yep. Um, you'll get a, you, your a pawn is weak, but so is his b6 pawn. Yeah. Uh, b5, if black just closes the position with a5, how are you going to make progress with your c6 pawn if he also blocks it with rook c7 if um so b5 a5 rook c7 after at some point so you're just gonna try to play very passively and block it i guess the d6 pawn is hanging i'll start by taking that so I'm true up. never mind that's also hanging here <sighs> i mean 
it just looks suspicious for black. I mean, can't white just take on d6 as well? Yes. <laughs> I didn't see it until you asked me what I'm supposed to do after you try to blockade me. And then uh, like, but, but what happens after rook d8? Oh, you try to trap my queen? That's not yeah, cool. I did try to trap your queen. Maybe that's why it didn't work. Yeah, you tricked me into that. <laughs> we got him. We oh, got him, but guys. if my pawn's on b5, then my king, queen can run back to a3. That's right. So, wait, now can I take that pawn? Wait, what's queen g2? Is that... Maybe that's a good move, but... So that e takes f4 doesn't come with a threat? Yeah, it's probably mm -hmm. just a good move then. Just defending that c6 pawn still with two pieces. Uh, e f4 I just take back, probably even with the g pawn and open the g file. Now I think I can just... Maybe it's rook f1, but I thought b5 was an option for white. Because now I played b5. Play that so quickly, though. It seems like he obviously just didn't want to allow any counterplay. Although, I don't know if that's right. Yeah, I would have went b5. Because now he is allowing counterplay. He just stopped his best plan here. Why did he play so quickly? He probably thought he doesn't have that much time left, so he's just going to move quickly and save, conserve some time for later. But he had to go b5 as white because black, Nicholas Theodore, very smart to play b5 himself. Okay, well, black is not even close to out of the woods yet um, because the king might feel a little bit iffy soon. After move like f5 is an option. Just... Um, you know, giving away a pawn, f5, g5, g5, rook f5, queen to e4, or something like that looks at least somewhat acceptable, but no, it's still a pawn, so I, I'm struggling yeah. here. I'm struggling. Yeah, and and uh, yes, Jungle Rundle, Fabi, and Ding Loren are still playing. So let's go to their game. Yeah, so it's a rook end game, two rooks. Ding Loren has two pawns against one pawn. Um, the king is really close to where the G and H pawn would promote, which makes me think it's more drawish. Obviously, he doesn't want to trade off his rooks here. Although sometimes you can even trade off rooks and still make a draw in this type of position. But yes, ideally speaking, you don't trade the rooks off because it, it requires you to walk a tightrope, even if there is going to be a drawing chance. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. this is He's going to move his rook away, but then he's going to be worried that Oh no, the uh, rook cuts off my king. So can white just yep. play king g2, pawn g4, king g3, and play like that? I mean, that looks very tempting from my perspective here, just trying to bring that king up slowly and surely. So, okay, I'm just keeping an eye on just on all these games. It looks like Wesley So is trying to press against Wang Yue. Here okay. we see Ding Liren trying to go rook e2 and trade rooks. Okay, so king g2. Okay, so Fabiano doesn't want to trade look rooks here. It seems like he's more afraid of that variation. Definitely, but, definitely. But what is he going to do once uh, white starts pushing pawns? I guess what he'll try to do since his king is cut off is try and trade that pawn off. Yeah, so let's say because G4. Because then he can trade off rooks and it's a draw if white only has one pawn. Exactly. Since yeah. So your rook a6 back or even rook to a8. Uh, but the point is you try your rook a6 to f6 and trade off the rooks that way so that when the king of pawn in the game is reached, it's going to be a theoretical draw. But that's uh, that's the clear intention here. So let's see. Okay. What's his name? Um, Nicholas Theodore won the c6 pawn in that game, and now is up a pawn, looking very good for him. So Zhao Jun is either going to pray for, to hold this game or just going to lose. Let's look he up. has 16 seconds. Yeah, he's in terrible oh, shape. Oh, man. Um... His position is just awful. And violent contemplation against Yun Shen Li. That's Josh Bloomer, Yun Shen Li. Yun Shen Li with the black pieces is even on material. Her king feels a little more iffy. And that move C4 played to open up the position. Oh, Caruana and Ding Liren just drew. So. Okay, they drew. Yeah. So they drew because of... And uh, they traded one pawn, so then it was one pawn and a rook, and traded rooks, and then it was a draw. Yep. So like we had predicted. We so smart. Um, okay. Wow, that moves uh, C4 by Josh Bloomer. looks looks really good. Just giving away this pawn to open up some lines for the rooks. That looks... Like, it's an intimidating move. Obviously, he had to calculate here. Um, queen takes c4. I'm guessing it gets met by rook ec1. 
but what happens after queen f4? Um, let's see, the queen a6. Okay. Queen f4, your idea was to trade off the queens? That looked... Yeah, trade off the queens since we got an extra pawn. But let's look, I guess, at what she yeah. played here. Yeah, she did. So she did just take the pawn with the queen. I don't know if c4 was actually a good move. Yeah, maybe not. It looks like one of those good moves. Take c4 looks scary, but taking with the queen, if she, she gets to keep her center pawns here, is a different story. Yeah, now all of a sudden, white is just running out of steam. I just play rook to e7. Don't trade that rook. Put your rook on a nice defensive central square that covers the e6 square. And um, how many pawn? White blacks up a pawn. Knight d4 will come next for black. So yeah, I like the move rook to e7 as a defensive resource. So if Shangdu wins this game, that brings them one uh, game closer in the standings to getting this uh, first place in the Battle Royale. So let's see back right. to Wesley. So he is now in an endgame up a pawn, but his king is cut off, but the e6 pawn is weak. So mm. what to make of this here? Right. Well, I th knight takes e6 with check. Ooh, okay, like it was the move. immediate move that I thought he had to calculate, but I'm guessing he had thought of that. Well, he threw in this rook b3 first because e6 is still going to be under attack, and you can't yep. take on d4 because bishop d4, knight e6 check, picks up that bishop. Right. Uh, with, with the so it makes sense that you'd want to kick the bishop away first, especially since it's so close to your king. Right. So bishop f2, yeah. sort of a sad necessity, I guess. And now knight can come to f4 to win the d5 pawn as well. Mm -hmm. So king f6 is met by maybe even rook to b6, just protecting the knight because d4 is defended. King f7 played, okay. Okay, so you can play knight f4 here like you suggested. And then if bishop takes d4, are you comfortable? I don't know. I guess you have to lose d4 here. Yeah, but then d5 is going to be lost as well. That's the good news. Yeah, um, yeah, you're definitely getting the d5 pawn back. Um, yeah. I just don't like that the white white king is cut off. Right, so king g6 now. I mean, just to attack the knight. That looks right. Oh, 24 seconds for Wesley So, by the way. I wasn't even looking at that. Yeah, and also uh, San Francisco won a game. Steven Zirk beat, beat Molten Lee. Molten Lee, yeah. Okay, and there Wesley So gained time. That's why he went knight g5 to e6. He gained some time on the clock here. I put his rook on b6, protecting this knight. And bishop e3, now rook f2 check, takes f3. Isn't that, is that a pawn? Is that a grabbable pawn? That looks grabbable to me. Here he goes. Gobble, gobble, take on f3. There you go. And it looks like Zhao Jun is also losing his game still. So I think St. Louis Archbishops is going to end up top of the Battle Royale today. Yeah, because there's no way Wang Yue can win this yeah. position. He's down a pawn, so even if he yeah. does well to hold, Wesley So would essentially have to lose on time to lose yeah. a position like this. And they're also going to be leading the pack in the Atlantic division after this. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're quite a, quite a good game for them. They're a real, real good team, of course. And whoa, Jun Zhao made the move with one second left, not even. And, okay, I don't know if Black is going to win this game, Nicholas Theodoro, because there's just a lot of checks going on here, and I'm not sure that um, Theodoro's king is really going to make it out. But 3.5 seconds left is not a good look for, uh, for Jun Zhao in, in this game. You really don't want to leave yourself to just mere seconds when there's still mating nets as possibilities. The H-pawn can start pushing, and you're down two pawns in the current position. Uh, just, you know... One of the pawns are double, there's D pawns, but mm -hmm. still you're down two pawns here. Okay, so if black doesn't have any risks of perpetual, which it doesn't seem like he does since he can block them with the bishop and the queen combined, then he can just start pushing his pawn right. on H5 since it's his advantage in the position. There it goes. There but we now go. B5 is hanging. So like, who's winning this pawn? All of a sudden, Jun Zhao is actually creating a winning chance of his own. Um, queen a2 check. The king will just run to d1 and then e2. The, the bishop shields the king. 
and mm -hmm. the white king feels safer than black. It's not that there's going to be a checkmate, but this b pawn also feels easier to push. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong with that assessment, but all of a sudden it looks like white is the one who's taking over this game. Wait, why king to c1 and not to d1? Is he just trying to make a draw here? So Wesley, so or he has eight seconds. Maybe he's trying to get more time. Well, he needs to win things. this game for his team to win. To oh, but they're actually behind San Francisco and Seattle right now. Uh oh. Yeah, they need to actually start scoring. Second mechanics, Seattle sluggers. Everybody's coming. Okay, there goes H four. Check. Okay, I don't see White losing this game, but I also just looked out of the corner of my eye, and um, I'm bored four for St. Louis instead of being worse, they're up a pawn. So it looks like you know, even if they lose this game, they really can't lose on board four. So they're going to end this battle royale on top. And, and I, I don't think they're going to lose this game since they both have pass pawns, but just not winning anymore. So right. I guess that leaves drawing. <laughs> well, I actually, okay, I don't know about King C2. That felt like an uh, unneeded move there. But I, King C4, just keep bringing that king up. Like, this h2 pawn is not going anywhere. The b5 pawn is much more pushable. Okay, so if I go b5... That's true. You can continue with b5 here, but then black is going to try and perpetual check you, but he's not. He's just grabbing pawns. Like, whose pawn is going first here? Right. Well, b7 wasn't working right away because of queen f3, but black couldn't push his pawn either. Who's better and why? I mean, black has to be better. I don't see how you can escape all the checks. I cleaned right. five checks. So like, but can black actually convert to a win here? I don't know. No. King c5? Uh -oh. No, go king c5. Go back to c4. and Oh, no, king c4 now, queen c3 check. This is getting confusing. <laughs> Aw, Tagvon. Look out for Australia. Big move up the board, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Australia really struggling down there. So king on d7 in this one. King c8, touchdown. I mean, it, queen takes d4. It's a free pawn with check. Take on d4, queen d4. You're, I mean, white's going to win this game. This is the worst game of predict the move ever. Well, uh, w somehow... I'm not saying you're doing a bad job. It's just so hard with time pressure because they're also missing, probably. Everything went wrong for black in this game. Like, I mean, it just... Yeah. Yeah. Queen G3. Okay, he's not giving the check. Queen G3 check now. Okay, I, I'm not. I'm just gonna watch because I have no idea what's happening here. But Queen on G3 felt like a good check to be on because. Wait, what? Take on a five. Take he the wins. queen. No, take the queen. Yeah, Queen takes a five one because he'd promote his pawn and Black can't promote on H2. Yikes. I mean, there's so much you know nervous energy happening here. They don't have time, you know, both under 10 seconds. Queen e6 check, good move. Take on h3 next. Okay, well, white's winning this game. You were right. You said white was going to win. It just, it just. I did not see this happening. Just how the game was like, the trajectory of it, how it was trending, felt like very good for white. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Queen c6. There it is. Good, um, game over. Apparently, Hikaru played a really good game. We could look at it after this since this is the last game. B7. Okay, now this is going to be instructive. There it is, king b5 to a6. The black king is way too far away. You have king a6. That way you get your queen unstoppable. Okay. Wow, that was crazy. And that was a good way to end the night because let's go to Naka's game just to show the fans, to make people happy. Yep, people are saying it's intense. Was okay, it? let's let's look at that as well. Okay, let me find the game. Don't forget, you guys can watch his game on his channel as well. Wait, where is his game here? Oh, there it is against Ahmed Adli. So let's scroll all the way back. He started with a normal opening. Good for him. And actually, it was Adli who played a weird opening. Second move, knight of six, atypical in the Sicilian because it does allow white to expand so quickly in the center. And Hikaru answers well. And the problem with black's position in, in this setup is you can't go you with your d-pawn because mm -hmm. white will take en passant, or if you go d6, it'll take directly. And I have a pawn, queen, and bishop attacking. You only have bishop and queen defending, so you're going to lose material. So white just kind of clamps down on the position, and Ikaru did everything correctly, it looks like. 
and black king is in the center and not going anywhere. Right. So after move 17, knight c6, queen e2, maybe black can castle now. That probably would have been the way to go. Instead, he left his king in the center for a little too long. And obstacle bishop. So actually, this isn't so bad for black. Uh, yeah, black doesn't seem like he's devastatingly lost or anything. I'm curious what made fans in chat say this was the best game of the night. I want fireworks. Well, after rook h7 and move 26, I can't really say I love black's position very much because there's a rook on h7. Um, that's definitely not appealing. And Hikaru's f3 was really good. <laughs> Hess hates Naka. I don't hate Naka at all. It's, I've known Hikaru for a really long time. Uh, uncomfortable chuckle. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just funny that someone would say that. It's like, I've known Hikaru for such a long time. Uh, yeah. Ridiculous assertion. No, Hess just was trying to look at more games since it's easy to over-focus on the top players, and you actually miss a lot that way. Yep. So it looks like Hikaru just rolled his pawns down the board. And try to improve his bishop, but okay, wasn't making progress. In fact, he's making, getting himself in a little bit of trouble here. He lost a pawn. And a move 53, rook g4. I mean, this game just looks kind of crazy. Okay, now black, black gave away a pawn. I don't even know how to translate this game to the audience. It just like was a wacky game where Hikar was much better then Adli did well to hold on. Then Hikar was better. Then Adli looked like he was doing okay. But okay, let's play this game out to its conclusion. Yeah, it's, I mean, this, there's no way this should be winning. Because Adli's down one pawn, but the yep. opposite colored bishops on move 72. As the game continues on here, it looks like something went wrong. Okay, well, the, the Black King kind of got in trouble here. and Okay. Yikes. Okay, well, I don't know why I looked through that game. It's 2 in the, <laughs> it's two in the morning. I didn't really... Yeah, boys, you were just like, I'm, I'm just doing this because we, we said we would, and I want, but what? It's an end game. Oh, he convert. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to raid Gold Dust Tori. So, go All right. Um, GDT, she's awesome. She's, yes. she's a great streamer. But you know, just to sum all this up here, Alexandra, and not to look at any more games because my mind is mush, but we see that Hikaru came through in the end. He helped his team into fourth place there, which is very respectable. Um, you know, him, with, along with Georgi Markovashvili, led the way. Um, but at the end of the day, it was the St. Louis Archbishop to a very deserving of the Battle Royale win. Fagana Caruana, Wesley So were great forces in the top two boards, and they got just enough from the bottom two. You know, a minus score on board three, an even score on board four, but that was enough for, for them to Sometimes win Hess is more, you know? Oh, I see what you did there. I heard it in chat before, but I had to reuse it. I have never seen that before, so I love it. I'm giving you all the credit. There we go. And, yeah. Oh, Kashiminki, thanks for the 500 bits. I'm really glad you like the commentary. Ineffable. Love the vocabulary as well. Kashiminki oh, is great. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Um, and, yeah, you, you were continuing to say about how it was okay even though their fourth boards didn't do as well as we thought. Yeah, I, I got really nothing here. You just hit me up with Hess's more, so... This is more. And uh, Greg Shahadi just pointed out that this was the lowest scoring Battle Royale winner yet, which goes to show that the section was really tough. Obviously, it's always harder to score more points when you're playing harder people. But <laughs> yeah, it was a great comeback from the Seattle Sluggers and the San Francisco Mechanics. People are asking, Alexander, did you play in the U.S. Amateur Team East this weekend? I think I saw no. your sister playing. Andrea was definitely not yeah, there. Yeah, I was going to say, that seems pretty far out. But Laughing Godzilla says, you guys are awesome. Now I'm going home way too late, and only Burger King is open. Well, sorry, 
but not sorry. However, enjoy your nights, everybody. We had a great time. Well, I know I did. I'm sorry, Alexandra. I probably put you through the ringer here a little bit, but I had fun. Gold Dust Tories coming up next. Any final brilliant thoughts from the one and only Alexandra Botez? In terms of Gold Dust Tory, she got to a thousand rating in nine weeks. So for those of you learning, stick around so that you can at least check her out and come back to her streams. Hopefully you guys had a good time. I know I did, and I was looking forward to this most of the day. If you guys liked our commentary, you can hover over Robert Hess and you'll see some purple buttons pop up and magical purple buttons. You got to see them. And it's one click to follow the commentators as well as Hikaru and Pro Chess League and all of the other chess streamers. So you can get more involved in our lovely little community. Sales pitch over. All right. Well, that means we're over and out. Good night. Good luck. Have fun wherever you are. Yeah. But Thank you so much, mods and everybody for watching. Have to thank you guys oh. and Greg for staying here yes thank you especially to the mods good call i'm just my mind is gone it's 204 in the morning so yeah you need to get some sleep you've been putting in long hours it's very respectable yeah well on that note bye everybody have a great one see you guys